many different parts of the world, including Middle East, Algeria, Libya, uh, Yemen, and uh, India. So many other countries uh, applying this technique on onshore and offshore uh, uh, installations and locations. So uh, I think it is a very good opportunity for all of us to discuss this topic. This is a, this technology has already been established and commercialized, uh, but. Yeah, it is important for you guys to know it. So if you are either in the planning process of any particular operations, if you are in the field development, if you are in uh, uh, drilling operations, if you are in a service company or any other company, you need to know about this. You know, this is very important because eventually this will become a, a normal drilling uh, technique. Uh, to be a bit more specific, let me tell you, if you are, uh, let's say, a petroleum engineer um, and planning a particular well, uh, usually, you ask uh, uh, you know uh, the drilling guys, the drilling contractor, the drilling operations people to drill that well in a particular way. And sometimes they come back to you with some challenges, saying that well, this is a little complicated, and we have uh, this issue and you know uh, that problem. So with that, uh, you if you know about some advanced techniques, you can suggest to them that why don't you try uh, to drill a particular section with managed pressure drilling. Uh, yes, and if you are with a service company, then uh, they may approach you saying that, well, can we use MPD over here in this particular area, in this particular section, in this particular well? Then you need to assess and advise them. You can use it. If so, how you are going to use it? What are your pressures? How much is the uh, you know uh, uh, value of the uh, project? All of that. So in that sense, this is a very important topic, and I'm really glad that uh, you guys are you know here joining me and uh, you know and let's get started further and as we go along we will discuss more uh, the technical and the practical aspect of it so uh, are you able to see my screen uh, are you able to read the content on that uh, on the screen yes sir yeah okay very good just acknowledge uh, uh, you know whenever i ask anything so i know for sure that everything is going on well okay thank you so, uh, so let's uh, in today's topic, what we are going to do is we are going to just introduce uh, uh, managed pressure drilling, and then we are going to review the difference between uh, conventional drilling, managed pressure drilling, and underbalanced drilling. Because sometimes managed pressure drilling and underbalanced drilling uh, gets confused uh, with uh, each other. Especially the older guys, uh, they are used to uh, uh, you know using underbalanced drilling. These are all general practical things that I'm. I'm as you, if you, uh, you know, are in the industry, uh, the older people, the senior people, and if you propose MPD, they would say easily say, no, 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 we have tried UPD and it did not work. And, you know, there is a kick and all that. So you need to be able to stop them and clearly tell them that, no, this is not underbalanced drilling. This is managed pressure drilling. We're talking about a different technique. Uh, I started my career as a UPD engineer and then I became an MPD engineer. So I'm telling you very practically from my own experience. So, and then... Uh, I was lucky to be, uh, you know, working with both the techniques, so I can easily identify the two, their application, their purpose, and all that. But, but like I said, you know, the sometimes the senior guys who are decision makers, who are key people in a company, can easily confuse the two. And uh, most of them, uh, they know a lot about the operation. The new uh, new methods that they may not be fully familiar, and in that case, it would be your responsibility to kind of point it out to them that these two techniques are different, and we are not referring to UBD, we are referring to MPD. So, so then we'll talk a little bit about the variants of MPD, and uh, then we will uh, you know discuss one of the methods like constant bottom up pressure. We will discuss uh, MPD equipment, MPD procedures, hydraulics, and uh, well control. So the well control procedure changes when you're uh, having an MBD setup on the rig. And it is important for you to know that. Also, it is important for you to know the limits. MPD is not a well control technique. It does help in uh, improving well control uh, uh, you know, systems in that way. And uh, at any point, if you feel like I need to explain more or I need to give you more details, just let me know. Some of you may be familiar with a lot of these uh, concepts, but it is just in the common interest of everybody that we, we are discussing this. Uh, so uh, that's what it is. You know? If you have uh, you know, any questions, we will keep it for the end and we will uh, answer them one by one. You can keep, make a note of this and we will answer them one by one in the end. 
so now it is uh, almost uh, then, then we will probably take a break at uh, you know in, uh, in one and a half hours from now uh, like uh, uh, 15 minutes break uh, and then again reconvene after that so at 11:30 uh, probably we will take a break and uh, then again uh, 11:45 we will join to continue and end the session so let's get started. So now here is the definition of MPD as per IADC. IADC is the International Association of Building Contractors and definition of MPD, uh, here it goes and I'll read it out for you. It's an adoptive drilling process used to precisely control the annular pressure environment limits and to manage the of MPD is to avoid continuous influx of formation fluid to surface. So this is the main differentiating factor between UBD and MPD. In UBD, we are producing while we are drilling in MPD, we are not producing, we are not supposed to produce. Any influx incidental to the operation will be safely contained using an appropriate process. So uh, the process is the MPD process. And this is how we control the influx. If at all we get uh, an influx during the drilling operations and this is the whole purpose of MPD basically. So how is it different from conventional drilling? So in conventional drilling the bottom hole BHCP which is the bottom hole circulating pressure is a function of your hydrostatic pressure and your friction pressure loss in the annulus whereas and the only adjustments that you have uh, during this whole process is to uh, change the mud speed, uh, the pump speed, or you can turn off your pump and pump on. So if you switch on your pump and switch off your pumps, uh, they will, uh, uh, you know, they will <coughs> uh, adjust your bottom hole pressure. So your bottom hole pressure is can be changed by uh, adjusting the pump speed or pump on and pump off. You can also do it by changing the mud density. But as some of you may know, changing the mud density in the well while you are drilling is not an easy task. I mean, it takes several hours before you get the correct density. I mean, you have to mix another type of mud. You have to dilute the mud in the mud tanks, and then it takes a very long time. So you have uh, basically limited adjustments, the uh, options that you have to adjust your bottom hole circulating pressure. But uh, in MPD, what you have is you have is you have these three uh, three parameters here. Uh, basically, uh, you have a uh, And you have your surface pressure. So these are the three three, three variables that you have that can uh, you know help you uh, in the uh, process. So the effective bottom hole pressure can be changed with fewer interruptions by changing the surface back pressure. We are talking about the surface back pressure. This element that can be changed. Let us look at this schematic, which gives you uh, gives you uh, an option to uh, you know uh, basically. Uh, let me get rid of this. Yeah, basically uh, gives you an option to compare the three. Now, stick in conventional drilling. Uh, this basically plot for is depth versus pressure, and on your left side is your pore pressure and fracture gradient. So uh, what you have is uh, what you have is uh, your and then and this red line here is your static mud weight, and uh, uh, the the dotted red line is static, and this uh, you know dark red line is your dynamic. So what is what is this showing over here is that if this is showing you uh, when you're mud when, when you're not circulating when you're not uh, pumping in the static mud column is above your formation pressure so, and then when you start pumping your friction pressure law, uh, uh, losses in the annulus gets added and this is how you get additional pressure in the well now with this this is sometimes you can exceed your fracture pressure as it can be seen here as you go deeper in the well there is a possibility of exceeding the fracture pressure. And while when you exceed your fracture pressure, uh, you can potentially induce losses. And to prevent that, MPD can be used. And now here you see in the second window, uh, in the green, uh, the green line is your static mud weight. So as you can see here, now if we compare this with the conventional, the static mud weight uh, that you have over here is uh, quite uh, close to your pore pressure. And in some cases it is below your pore pressure. So the mud weight is planned in such a way that you actually are at balance or slightly below your formation pressure. 
So what happens is, uh, what happens is uh, when you apply, uh, you know, when you go into dynamic condition, then you have, uh, you know, increase in your, uh, with your annual friction pressure losses, you have, you have an additional pressure in the well. But you, uh, but in this case, what we have done here is you have not, uh, you know, you are below your fracture pressure. So you are not, you are in, within, the, within the window and you are not inducing any losses. Now look at this other, the third line. Look at the third line over here. Uh, the, the one that, uh, you know, uh, the one that uh, we have, uh, uh, which says static and uh, with back pressure. So what we do when we are static, we apply back pressure. So we do not, uh, we do not take the pressure back to uh, the original value. Uh, and thus we maintain the same pressure in the well. This is how it is done uh, with the uh, MPD. In general, this is how to give you a very quick high level overview, this is how it is done. So you have your static pressure, you have your uh, inner surface back pressure and with that you maintain the same thing. But the point over here to be noted is that with static column and surface back pressure, your pressure profile above in the well changes. It is not mimicking the same as what you would have with uh, you know, while you are drilling with the uh, when you are static. But we the, uh, the profile is in the well. Now let's go to the third plot, which is underbalanced drilling. In underbalanced drilling, as you can see, when you are static, you are below your pore pressure. You are below your pore pressure by certain value, and even uh, in dynamic conditions. You are below your pool pressure, so it is quite a to different, totally different way of planning and drilling. You are not, uh, you are not uh, at balance or you are not above balance, but you are always under balance. You are below your uh, your bottom hole pressure. Your you know your values are below your pool pressure. So these are the these are some of the key points that it is important for you to note, and uh, <clears throat> and this this is how you would uh, you would plan your uh, you know operations in these three scenarios. So, so what do we do? Uh, what is the difference between UPD and MPD in some in a nutshell? Uh, as there are many similarities, this can, as I said earlier, this can often get confused because the type of equipment sometimes is similar. The two technologies evolve similar. So, what are the differences? The difference is UPD, where the hydrostatic pressure of drilling fluid is intentionally designed to be lower. In MPD, the hydrostatic fluid is designed to be at balance or <clears throat> marginally overbalanced in some cases. So these are the two key differences that you need to keep in mind. And further, the, from application standpoint, UBD is used for reservoir enhancement and MPD is used for drilling optimization. So just keep these things in your, <clears throat> in your mind that these are, the, these are some of the uh, 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 main areas of application where MPD is used for drilling uh, optimization, improving the drilling performance, whereas UPD is used for reservoir enhancement, prevent formation damage, get higher production from the well, and you know drilled in reservoir section. Let's move ahead. So with MPD, the well is not intentionally encouraged to flow to surface during drilling, but the wellbore pressure profile is tightly managed with engineered equipment and processes. So these are the uh, this is basically in a uh, in a nutshell the application and you use it can be used in intermediate section it can be used in production section so what happens in conventional drilling the bottom hole pressure in conventional drilling basically moves like this it fluctuates now if you have a large window between your fracture pressure and the your reservoir pressure then these kind of fluctuations uh, fall within the window and uh, uh, now, why these fluctuations happen is when you turn your pump off, you lose your friction pressure loss in the annulus, and in that uh, in that way, you are basically losing certain pressure in your well, and your static mud weight is uh, below uh, your dynamic mud weight. So this is how basically the drilling operations progresses. But <clears throat> you, uh, but what if your operating window is small like this? If you have a small operating window. When you are static, your pressure goes below your reservoir pressure when your pumps are off. And this scenario can cause uh, influx of formation fluids into the well bore. Uh, or it can cause well bore instability. Well bore instability, as uh, we all may know, is basically when the shale in the well reacts with, the, with your mud and then it swells and it starts to fall in uh, the, the well. And this can cause a lot of drilling problems. Uh, 
the one of the way to mitigate well bore instability is to have sufficient uh, pressure in the well, sufficient mud weight in the well, uh, such that uh, it can uh, hold the formation uh, together and not allow it to fall. So this is the typically a drilling window, a schematic that you would uh, be familiar with, and you guys would be using it for in your planning and you know in your It is conventional drilling or MPD. You usually look at the two <coughs> two plots. One is the your pore pressure, and the other is the fracture gradient. And then you have two other plots, uh, which is uh, where you have your trip margin, and when you have your uh, you know uh, the other trip margin, which is above the fracture gradient. You know? So uh, this is the kick margin, basically that they call. It. So the goal of uh, managed pressure drilling is to use closed and pressurized uh, mud circulation system, uh, you know, to ensure that you do not encounter any of these uh, problems like well bore instability or kicks and losses. Let's have a quick look at the variants uh, of uh, the four variants. The variants uh, that you usually come across, the most uh, common one is the constant bottom hole pressure, and this is what we'll be mainly discussing today. Uh, we have another. We can have another session for pressurized mud cap drilling because this is a totally different technique, and uh, we can certainly discuss that. Uh, and then there is another one called dual gradient drilling, and then there is a return flow control that is HSC. So constant water hole pressure is uh, basically the aim of it is to reduce non-productive time, enable fewer and deeper casing strings. Uh, you know, while pore pressure fracture gradient windows are narrow. Pressurized mud cap drilling is used in uh, extreme loss circulation uh, situations. So in cases where you have uh, carbonate formations with big losses, uh, you have huge fractures and works where you have total losses, then this method is used to continue to drill with losses without getting any returns to surface. Dual gradient drilling is also used in deep water application where you have two different fluids. So you have actually uh, another fluid in the, in the topper, top section of your well in the riser. And then, uh, then uh, in the reservoir area or in the actual drilling area, you have a different fluid. So you have two different fluid systems uh, in the in the well, and uh, these are they are they are managed. Uh, you know, this is how you manage your uh, uh, well bore pressure. And HSC simply there is no much uh, uh, basically pressure control done in this area, but you usually have just the MPD system on the well. To monitor your returns to see uh, that there are no uh, well control incidents because you're tightly closely monitoring your uh, uh, well bore pressures and your return flow and you're also trying to control you're also trying to you, you here in this hsc type managed pressure drilling variant you do not you do not apply any surface back pressure or you do not change the choke manifold but you do have it in the system and you have, it is been uh, from uh, the Coriolis meter and you, you, you just use it as a, as a system to monitor basically. Here is uh, basically how you, you would usually set up your constant bottom hole pressure, uh, you know, equipment. So let me just start this from the beginning. So you have your rotating control device. This is your rig BOP, which is part of your conventional system. On top of it, you install your your uh, already control device. Um, then here you have your hydraulically operated valves. Uh, the two of them, as you can see, right after the rotating control device. And then you have your, this is your back pressure pump here, which is usually uh, used to pump across the choke manifold. So whenever you're, uh, whenever the rig pumps, stop you need to use your back pressure pump because these chokes they operate only when there is some certain flow flowing through it these are the two chokes over here shown in the schematic this is the whole manifold and these are the two chokes so but you need a, a back pressure pump to uh, flow across the manifold and uh, therefore uh, therefore this is this is there and then you have this key detection system which is the flow meter uh, used which is downstream of choke manifold all above here is high pressure uh, and below the choke manifold is a uh, low pressure uh, pipeline pipe work, you know, and then this is the annual preventer. This is the uh, rig BOP and this is the mud gas separator. So you have various combinations uh, at the end. You can either 
you know, send your fluids to the mud gas separator or you can send it to the, the shield shaker. And uh, this is how generally your pressure in the well, if you have a kick, then you can apply a back pressure, increase your back pressure, and then you can bring, uh, you know, you, uh, you can uh, keep your uh, pressure in the well above your core pressure and thus prevent uh, the influx from coming to the well bore or increasing its intensity. And these are the different options that you would have uh, with constant water hole pressure, how you can change your pressure in the well. Just the schematic to show. So how does MPD enhance peak detection? Uh, we just discussed about uh, the MPD setup and you might have heard that MPD helps in peak detection and MPD uh, improves the ability of uh, any setup for peak detection. So, so in general, uh, it is safe to say that MPD uh, you know, enhances primary well control that is uh, related to the drilling fluid through additional equipment and processes. So we will discuss this in uh, more details in the in one of the other topics that we are going to cover today. But here, uh, MPD has an inbuilt kick detection system that provides warning on an influx detection and control. So how does that happen? So let's examine what do we have on a rig, on a conventional setup. What what tools do we have on a, any conventional setup against what we have with MPD? So on any conventional rig, uh, some of you might have seen that you have a flow out open flow line like this. This is your this is your well, and this is your flow out. So what you have is essentially a tidal type flow sensor which is like this. This is what you see here, a paddle type flow sensor. And the readings are zero to 100%. So what you do is usually the mud loggers and the driller, they calibrate this. They have, there are two normally, one is from the mud logger and one is from the driller. And the drilling operations people, the driller, uh, drilling engineer, and everybody gets these readings on conventional drilling when you do not have any, any MPD uh, equipment or setup. So this flow, flow out sensor usually deflects uh, for, and it measures from zero to hundred percent. So what you ask anybody, how much is the flow? He would say 30%, 40%, 50%. These type of readings are relative measurement. They do not give you exactly what, uh, you know, what, what, what measurements uh, you would like to know in terms of gallons per minute. <clears throat> so while you have your GPM, you do not have a GPM out. You can calculate GPM using your pumps, uh, pump, pump strokes but you do not have a GPM out. But here, in this case, uh, you know, you just get a flow out in percentage. And this a sensor is a mechanical device. It can probably get stuck sometime and it can show some readings and it is always it's highly inaccurate. We have seen this uh, quite a bit and we rely on this. And it keeps fluctuating between 15 and 20% of gain and loss. And you're always um, uh, not very sure what this reading is going. So although in the, Theoretical aspect of well control, they say that you need to monitor gain from, you need to monitor a flow out. And this is how you monitor flow out and gain. But this, the, the, in practical world, this, this sensor usually doesn't read very accurately. And, uh, you know, it is very uh, inefficient. Also, you have a mud balance like this on the rig, uh, which will give you the density. So one other measure, and you have this pit level uh, sensors uh, here. You, which you might have seen on the rigs. So these diesel sensors, they are slow to respond. And this is a manual device where the mud engineer or the derrick man or the, the, the mud man, he will take some sample from your tanks and he will measure your density and he will tell you whether your fluid has got the same density that you're pumping in or it has been, uh, or there has been some gas influx in this. So if there is a gas in the mud, it can probably, uh, you know, it can reduce uh, your potency. And then this, this is how you would usually find out on a conventional link setup. Similarly, this is how you measure your viscosity, final viscosity using this. These processes are used on any conventional drilling setup and they are very slow. They are, you know, sometimes if the guy doesn't take the reading but reports the same previous reading just because he's busy with some other work, you will have to rely on that. You don't know. So, so this, also, this sensor is there to measure pit level. Now, one of the indicators of kick is increasing your pit level. And this sensor measures that and gives you an indication, but the pits are uh, 
are very very big and you know record small gain sometimes it is not so uh, easy so what do we have in uh, uh, in mpd setup otherwise so you in mpd setup you directly measure uh, flow out this is the device uh, which is called as coriolis meter and we'll discuss more about this as we go along uh, what it does is it's a highly accurate device it measures the frequency of these two coils you pump your fluid into it and uh, as the density and the flow rate changes uh, the, uh, the the device will give you the, the readings directly. So in other words, if you're pumping 400 gallons per minute, uh, this uh, at your, uh, in the well, this device will measure your flow out. And if it is 400 gallons per minute, that means your flow in and flow out are equal and uh, you are not gaining anything from the well. If it shows 350 gallons per minute, that means uh, indicates that you're losing 50 barrels per hour per minute, sorry. If you're getting 450, that means you're gaining some fluid. So this device gives you directly uh, a reading that compares with your flow in, and you are uh, you know, better equipped to take action with this setup that is uh, actually part of the MPD uh, equipment. So this, will, this device is uh, something that is in addition, gives you more information, more data, and you have more uh, you know, accurate uh, data to take corrective actions as we go along. And uh, the, 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 there is a lot of information available on internet. You guys are, you know, welcome to study about this and make your analysis, make your, uh, you know, how, how the device is mounted and what are the limitations, what happens when gas comes inside that, all of that. There are many, uh, many things associated with it. And I would highly encourage all of you to study about this in your own spare time. Because these, these devices are becoming more and more common on the drilling rigs, especially offshore especially high profile well, high temperature high. So it's more than more likely that you will encounter this used just standalone uh, without MPT setup or with uh, MPT setup. So it is in your interest to know how it works. So it improves, as I just mentioned, it improves loss circulation detection, it improves kick enhancement and it uh, gives you continuous reading. So when I say continuous reading, so this one are in the conventional setup, this is uh, batches. You just take a sample, you put it in this cup and you measure your density. Whereas this one gives you real time continuous mud density. And you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to uh, stop and uh, take any sample and rely on the individual uh, assessment. So what are the general applications of MPD? They are in type of conditions where you have excessive mud weight, you have wellbore ballooning, loss circulation, hard formation, yeah. You know, and you have any issues with hole cleaning, and you have nuisance gas when you are zero open. Uh, well control, any other wells that have uh, such situations, you are uh, you know required to. You, know, you 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 are you know probably a good candidate for MPD. So let's go down to the next uh, topic of our uh, discussion today, which is MPD equipment. Uh, that this is a particular, uh, this schematic shows uh, MPD equipment setup. We discussed it briefly, but I will just uh, go back and talk, talk about it. There is one, uh, one more uh, new equipment that you have here. That is the rig pump diverter shown over here. This equipment is a new type of equipment. So I, if you remember, I mentioned about that back pressure pump. So this is a replacement to that back pressure pump. This actually, so in this, in this because of this equipment, we are eliminating uh, eliminating the third pump, we are simply using a rig pump diverter. So this rig pump pumps into the well, the same rig pump pumps into the choke manifold here. And uh, so we are not using a third pump from operational point of view. This is very uh, important because we are mo uh, mobilizing one less equipment, but we are obviously mobilizing this rig pump diverter, but uh, the mobilizing this small piece of equipment is a lot easier. Then mobilizing uh, the then mobilizing uh, the uh, a pump and rigging it up. So this one uh, seems to be an improvement to the uh, MPD setup. Then you have your primary flow line. Uh, uh, you have your MPD choke manifold. You have your Coriolis meter. Uh, prior to that, of course, there is a rotating control device, uh, uh, Coriolis mass flow meter. Uh, then uh, as I said, either if everything is normal, everything is going smooth. 
you go to shell shaker. If not, you divert your flow to MGS. If you have a large gas influx, you close this valve, you send it to MGS. And then once the gas is separated from the, from the drain fluid, then you uh, pump it to shell shaker. So this is a typical, uh, this is how a typical rotating control device looks like. We have your, uh, the top part of this uh, is the bearing assembly. The bottom part of this is the RCD bow, and this is the hydraulically operated clamp. And we will see this, uh, we have an animation uh, about how this is installed and how this works. So this will give you an idea about uh, how, how the equipment is. So, so this is the bearing assembly. So, uh, so RCD technology is based on applying advanced compound, uh, you know, sealing rubber, uh, using a, you know, pressure against a, a rubber element. And then inside this, you, you have a drill pipe, right? your drill pipe, and then, then the seal is effective. So, so what happens is the fluid that comes from the well is diverted from this outlet uh, onto the flow line, and it doesn't go up. Allows, and then also it allows vertical movement of the pipe. So as you're drilling or tripping, your pipe goes in through and through this. So while it allows the vertical uh, movement and rotational movement of the drill pipe, uh, it does not allow any fluids to uh, flow from the RCD above uh, the bearing assembly. These are some of the models that Weatherford has, uh, you know, for different pressure ratings. This is another company called Pruitt. Uh, they also make uh, arteries. They are very well known. And uh, as you can see here, there are some specifications. Uh, there is a pressure rating. There is a maximum pressure rating. For example, you will when you are doing a managed pressure building operations, you will uh, you will have this uh, these things to take into account. All these parameters are very important. So you're you're uh, here. For example, let us go through them one by one. Uh, now you have your uh, rubber elements that is dual. So you have one here and there is one more inside. So you have two sealing elements in this RCD. Some of the RCDs have single sealing elements. So when you ask for an RCD, you should ask for two. But if uh, you can do with one, then, uh, then that option is there. Uh, you have to keep that in mind, whether you need a dual or a single. Uh, remember that if it is a dual RCD, the cost is going to be higher and the consumables, these rubber elements, this red color here, and then there is one black inside. These rubber elements are consumables and they are expensive, so you, they, they are changed, changed out. So if you need to change two, then it is going to be more expensive for you in your operations. So keep just keep this in mind now. Now here, the second parameter is RPM. So each RCD uh, device has a RPM limit. So you see here, maximum 200 RPM, which is okay. Uh, <clears throat> seems to meet most of the criteria, but some of the RCDs may not. You know, so maximum static pressure is 3,000 psi. Maximum dynamic pressure is 2,000 psi. Yeah, max pass through is seven inch. Now, what does this mean? This means that from here, whenever you have a drill pipe uh, that goes into the RCD, uh, your maximum uh, OD of the pipe and the tool joint is seven inch. So you need to keep this in mind. Uh, you need to know what drill pipe you're using and accordingly select the right uh, RCD rubber elements, particularly. They, these are changeable, interchangeable. If it's a smaller drill pipe, it's not a problem. But if it is a pipe that has got bigger than seven inch uh, tool joints, then it could be an issue because the maximum that this can handle is seven inch. So like this, you guys, when you become, uh, you when you start working as an engineer or you're already working as an engineer in any other industrial setup, you need to review this information about RCDs as you go along. And then this last parameter is height. Uh, so why height is important? Let us go back uh, to the layout. See, this is the height. The height is important because it is mounted on top of your annular VOP. Now, sometimes there is not enough space to accommodate this RCD above this as uh, you have your rig sub substructure, you have your rotary table here on top of your, uh, on top of your, <clears throat> here somewhere you have your rotary table. So you may not have enough space here to uh, accommodate the RCD. So it is important to know 
uh, the height of the RCD that you are going to use in your application in your, on your job. So these are the points that you should keep in mind. Uh, now, there is one more point over here, pass through without bearing. So this is with bearing when this sits in the bowl, and this is without bearing. So this, when you are, when you are doing conventional operations, when you're running in your DHA, when you're running in your uh, other tools, they are much more bigger than your drill pipe, as most of you know. So then you need, then you need to run them in when the bearing assembly is not there. So you need to know the pass through uh, of the RCD without the bearing assembly and how, and, and how you are going to protect the internals of the RCD when you're running tubulars. All these things are important and you need to uh, keep this in mind when you're uh, preparing for an MPD job. So this is how it is typically. Now, this is uh, basically just uh, an image of a choke, uh, an MPD choke. So here you have your, your uh, uh, position indicator. So as the choke uh, moves in and out, uh, the position indicator sends a signal. Uh, basically, you get your hydraulic signal to the choke from here and the choke moves in and out. So what it does is it basically by moving uh, in and out, it maintains your bottom hole pressure constant. The, the entire assembly looks uh, like this, uh, which has got a, a number of valves. You have your, these are most of these are gate valves and they are used to route your fluids from different flow paths. And sometimes you bypass your choke, sometimes you route from choke one, choke two, Sometimes you, uh, you know, you pass it through the gut line. Sometimes you completely bypass it. So there are many options on a manifold and uh, you can choose one of them depending on the operations. So what is the function of a choke? So basically it changes the bottom hole pressure to increase your, in, uh, in dynamically to increase your equivalent mud weight in the well. Uh, and uh, uh, reduces the pressure in the well as the situation dictates or as per the program. The flow meter uh, that we discussed about a little while ago. <clears throat> this is how uh, you know it is. It has, uh, this is how the function is, and in, in, once you put it that in the manifold, this is how it looks. Basically, you need to have it in the manifold, and there are some valves over here uh, that will help you to route uh, fluids from that. Now, if you can see here, when you want to flow through the flow meter, you have to close this valve and then go through the uh, flow meter. But whereas when you go, for, uh, when you don't want the fluids to go through the flow meter, when you want to bypass it, then you flow from here. So these are this is why the manifold is needed is sometimes when you don't want uh, things to go through your flow meter, for example, when you're circulating cement, when you're circulating, pumping any 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 fill, any, any, any other chemicals that you don't want uh, to pass through your flow meter, then uh, you need to bypass them. And this is where you need these kind of manifolds where you, uh, you have your valves here to isolate certain uh, flow path and then flow through the others. Through the others. So what else do you have here? Uh, you have a non return valve. Now let me show you in this diagram. Uh, let's go back to the diagram and you will get an idea. So here you have your non return valve. This is what I'm referring to now. So why do we need this non-return valve here? Let's uh, review. So the non-return valve essentially uh, protects, uh, it's also used in conventional drilling. So it is not very specific to MPD, but in MPD, it is kind of mandatory. This is your bit, this is your bit sub. And on, in that, you install this NRV, which is non-return valve, and there are two types of non-return valves and usually in MPD you put two of them. So they are basically the barriers. It's important to note that these are uh, part, one of your barriers. So at least two NRVs are to be installed and if at all you get an influx uh, in your well, these NRVs will prevent the flow of influx uh, from your bit nozzles all the way through your drill string. So these prevent the flow of fluid from your well, uh, you know, into through your through your drill string. So this is how they are required and they will be installed either by the drilling rig or by the MPD service provider. So this is how it goes. And uh, let's have a quick look at this uh, video animation. Uh, this is from Pruitt company. You will get an idea about how it is uh, 
uh, how the MPD setup is installed on the rig. So this is your bowl that I was referring to, uh, RCD bowl. This is the first thing that is installed on top of your annual preventer. And I was ref as I was referring, on top of it is your rig structure. So now why, why the height of the RCD is important when you're selecting is because otherwise you may, your height of the RCD may exceed uh, the height of the, you know, min, uh, or, or you may not have enough uh, space over here to install the complete RCD assembly. So therefore you need to know the height. Now, the next thing you do is you connect your flow line and those, these are the hydraulically operated valve. Why? Because if you need to stop, shut down the flow line for any reason, then you do it remotely, not by going up here, uh, but through hydraulic lines. Now, this is your bearing assembly. As I was, as I have shown to you, this is how the bearing assembly is installed. This is your either drill pipe or Kelly. It is already mounted on the Kelly and then it is lowered into uh, the bowl. This is your panel. This is a hydraulic panel. Most of the, uh, most of the RCTs have their own panel. Uh, uh, you need to operate this one. So what we, what we saw just now was after the bearing was installed, uh, an RCD operator closed uh, the RCD uh, basically uh, hydraulic unit using the hydraulic unit. He just closed the bowl so that the, it will hold the bearing assembly. So you lower the bearing assembly and using hydraulic pressure, you just close it. So this is how a, a sleek or a small MBD setup would look like uh, on any rig. You have your uh, mud gas separator, you have your player stack, your choke manifold, your Coriolis mass meter here. These are the main components. There could be add-ons as well. And this is the other, other components of the rig. Now, this is normal drilling operations. You, you have commenced your drilling operations. Your fluid has started to circulate. You can see those cuttings that are being lifted out of the well. This is your primary flow line. Uh, this is a closed pressurized flow line, and this will uh, take the returns to your RCD system or to your choke manifold. This is showing how the fluid flows through your choke. Here you can see how the choke uh, is moving back and forth. If you're in a, an automatic mode, in an automatic mode, in simple terms is that you give a set point to the choke to say that I'm going to maintain bottom out pressure at 8,000 PSI as an example. So what this will do is this will keep shifting back and forth to maintain your bottom out pressure at 8,000 PSI. And this is your Coriolis mass meter that we just discussed about.
now comes the hmi operations now this is all the hardware that is installed outside but you have a software and you have a control system that manages the the operations let's look at that so here an event has been detected an influx has been detected by the system and here you can see the trend line uh, going up because of the influx now here you have an mpd engineer or a choke operator one of them you can see here the pressure is going up here in this block and uh, this gentleman basically just close the choke reduce the flow out uh, this in, in turn apply uh, back pressure into the well by closing the choke you are applying uh, back pressure into the well you are increasing the pressure in the well this can help in containing the influx so now you can see these lines going back okay so this is the, this was the animation you know let's move on so what is uh, what let's uh, review the planning process so let's say if you are in a situation where you need to plan for mpd uh, the following is a general guideline you know so what you generally do is you do an engineering evaluation you collect the required data from the client and if you are a client then you need to give out this data to your um, to your uh, mpd provider but if you are an mpd engineer then you need to collect this data i'll show you the list of data in the next slide so uh, and then uh, then an mpd program is prepared by an mpd engineer this process takes approximately two to three weeks depending on the complexity of the project then the mpd engineer will pass on uh, the mpd program to the project manager the project manager who will focus on implementation so an mpd engineer will essentially decide what equipment he needs to use what type of pipe work he needs how much piping he will need what type of acid he will use what type of cloth manifold he will use how many what would be the pressures in the well what would be the pressure at the surface what uh, are you and this will be in discussion with uh, the client of course what kind of pressures you are going to apply what are the limits and then based on that equipment will be decided and then project manager will go identify the equipment put it all together and then prepare to mobilize it to the rig so what the data you need when you are uh, starting your project is of course your pore pressure and fracture gradient profile you need your well bore geometry you need your drilling fluid selection and properties offset well data uh, drilling program uh, reports uh, then uh, your well logging oil drilling uh, lwd logs you know, temperature profile uh, basically formation and uh, flow line uh temperature bottom of temperature and surface temperature what bottom of assembly you are going to use and the drill pipe information this is important because um, then you will be passing this to your rcd so so you need to know the size of the drill pipe and uh, you also need a uh, caliper data uh, of the formation that is uh, whether the hole is gauged or over gauged or there are washouts in the well and things like that so you need a lot of information this is just the basic information you need a lot of information but most importantly you need your sizes of the well bore you need your drilling fluid uh, you know design now what are the type of fluid well based mud water based mud why it is important because the bearing assembly the rubbers uh, are accordingly chosen uh, we are not discussing too much of the details of rcd here but give you some brief idea um, uh, you your rcd rubber elements are dependent on your drilling fluids the project manager will be as i just said in charge of getting the equipment ready to mobilize the field personnel are assigned operators you know supervisors they are assigned you know about this area who have been in the field for some time then you know the rig inspection in uh, you know rig inspection is carried out and uh, pnid is, uh, is developed we will see a pnid so pnid for those who don't know is uh, basically a process and instrumentation diagram it's very important in any uh, process uh, 
it's a very uh, important piece of document. And we will see that, uh, you know, in our next uh, slides. And uh, then uh, one of the important steps is to carry out uh, hazard and hazard uh, meetings uh, with the client, representatives, uh, you know, of the service companies, as well as other service companies. So they should be aware about all the hazards associated with uh, this operation. So when uh, MPD operation uh, commences, what you need to do as a project manager, MPD oversee the operations to ensure proper implementation of the procedures. We will discuss about the procedures uh, you know, in subsequent sections, but, but most importantly, you have uh, these key people. And uh, you know, if you get uh, an opportunity to work in this area, you could be playing one of these roles in the future. So uh, you, you would be either the project manager or the engineer or you know, uh, overseeing everything uh, based on the program that you have prepared. Oh, and uh, then uh, once the operation is completed, what we need to do is to do an evaluation of whether the job was successful. Did you have any equipment failure? Did you see any improvement in the drilling operations? Were you able to save time? Were you able to save cost? Like for example, uh, to give you an idea, uh, how would you save cost? As an MPD engineer, uh, when you do your uh, MPD program, instead of 13 PPG, if you have recommended 11 PPG, of drilling fluid. So when you collect the data, drilling fluid data here from the client, and the client has land uh, to use 13 PPG. Now in your assessment, because you have more tools, you, are you able to reduce the drilling fluid density from 13 PPG to 11 PPG? Were you able to drill successfully with 11 PPG mud weight? If so, you were able to save some cost for the company. You were able to give them uh, uh, cost, logistics, a lot of things, tangible and intangibly, you are able to give them a lot of advantages. So with this, uh, you, you can uh, evaluate this at the end of the job and you can document this and you can share this with your customer, with your client, uh, that uh, you are uh, able to uh, save uh, cost due to the influence. Now, were you able to achieve higher ROP, compare this with previous well, compare this with other wells, and if so, you can document, again, document that and uh, you can show share that to the uh, customer. So in a sense, this is how uh, it is done. Uh, okay. uh, the next topic uh, of our presentation, which is uh, uh, manage pressure really hydraulics. So do you have any questions for me? If you have just, you can unmute and uh, you know, let me know if you have any quick questions till this point. If you have any question, you can unmute your, yourself and just ask a question. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for um, sharing your valuable knowledge to us. Um, okay. I've got a, a few questions to ask you. My name is Soran and I work on okay. the Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, according to your the layout, the equipment layout, basically yeah. you, are, you have your own choke, okay? And yeah. from your choke, you divert fluid to the mud gas separator and to the flare line. Yeah. I didn't see any extra line. Sometimes when you have a, a well-controlled scenario, when you have, a, let's say, 20 barrel per hour, something like this. Okay. So you need to divert the fluid, especially when you have a gas kick. Yes. To the, I didn't see any line where from your choke, bypassing the mud gas, uh -huh. it's uh, directly going to the flag. That's rig choke saying. manifold? Yeah. No, no. I know from the rig choke manifold, you have a few lines, one to the mud gas separator, one to the mm -hmm. pit directly, we call it gut line. But yeah. As soon as you rig up your choke manifold, yeah. then from what I see from your diagram, you have yeah. only one line which is connected to the mud gas separator. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if you don't have to divert your fluid to the mud gas separator, you need to divert directly because of the well-controlled situation. Yeah. How are you going to do that, please? 
So if you have a well controlled situation, uh, most likely you will uh, you will uh, first uh, try to contain uh, the situation using your uh, choke point. First of all, this this is not a detailed engineering draw and drawing. Uh, so there are yes, uh, there are some. This is very high level drawing. You know, uh, I will. That show... need to be modified because we have that situation. I had mm -hmm. once with the Slumberji MPD. Okay. And uh, they added. They add that line because uh, they added a line. It's okay. That's good. See, so, sometimes it's, uh, these are very good points that you are highlighting, and uh, I think you, there is a lot to learn for everybody here. So, so I have seen uh, MPD setup where there is a primary flow line, there is a secondary flow line, there is a flow line going from you know uh, from the uh, rig uh, BOP to the rig choke manifold, uh, uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, arrangements possible with the with the valve network in the okay. in the real uh, situation. Uh, I was I, trying to simplify this. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask more questions? Because you have some questions maybe it would be better to yeah. share with you guys. I know yeah, sure. the time is consuming. No problem. Uh, we will. Uh, okay. We can uh, try to do it quickly, or we can take it offline also. No problem. Okay, I will do it quickly. Regarding your seals, the rubbers. Uh, yeah. The, there must be different. You have, you know, you have different kinds of fluid. You have oil-based mud. And, uh, yes. Base mud. Sometimes you drain with a sour. Well, yeah. What is the API standard for these rubbers, where it could withstand all these kinds of fluid and plus uh, the, the yeah, this is a very good, uh, Actually, this is a very good point. You know, you have a, you have a basically three type of uh, uh, flu, uh, sealing elements. Uh, one is the natural rubber. One is so the, poly the same as the. the yeah. It's the same as the BOP seal. Same the, uh, as the BOP. Uh, the, yeah. There is a natural rubber, there is a poly, uh, you know, and then there is a nitrile. There is three yeah, types. I, yeah, I got that. I got that. And, yeah, uh, and then this is all defined by API. This is based on the temperature and the fluid selection, you see. And okay. Uh, okay. these are the, these are available. So uh, in the RCD, when you select, uh, you need yeah. to you need to define that. You need to uh, tell the so, provider that you need either. Uh, a natural rubber or you need a nitrile rubber. Nitrile rubber is used for oil-based mud. Poly is also used for oil-based mud and natural rubber is used for water-based mud. I am aware of that just uh, for the, the feasibility study before you go ahead with the, I mean, that's- Yeah, the yeah for the feasibility study and for the benefit of all the, you know, audience here, not just- okay. Yeah. The third question is, uh, the, when you mentioned about the RPM for the RCD, rotating it, control- Yeah, device. okay. Yeah. Um, Nowadays, still Kelly rig is around, and some part of the world we still drill with the Kelly because of the companies and uh, all the business and economy. Uh, yeah. Kelly rig would not able to provide you two hundred RPM. No. So how are you going to manipulate your RPE or how are you going to add this system to a Kelly rig? No, no. So, so what we are saying here is the maximum RPM, not the minimum RPM. See. Uh, if you have a RPM which is 100 or 80 or 60, it I'm is talking about maximum, Nitin. I'm talking, I'm not talking about minimum. I'm talking about maximum RPM. If I need to rotate 200 RPM, let's say I'm drilling with 150 RPM in eight and a half hole section, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but my Kelly, my Kelly cannot be able to provide this. No, it's so a, the, uh, the top drive. No, the, if you have a top no... drive system, yeah. if you have a top drive system, yes, you can. You can go up to with a good TDS uh, new rate, you can go up to 300 RPM. Total correct, RPM. correct, yeah. Okay, so but what it is saying here- In the uh, Kelly scenario, you only have a rotating table to rotate and the rotating table maximum, you can go with 100. Yeah. How are you gonna manipulate this with the, your system with the, with the, with the Kelly rig? Or yeah. You, is the application for Kelly rigs also or not? Yes, yes, yes. There is an application for Kelly rigs also. The rubber elements are, uh, can accommodate uh, Kelly as well as uh, drill pipe, uh, uh, different shapes uh, of uh, tubulars. They can accommodate. Uh, the The problem with uh, RCD and the MPD system is not a not a, a lower RPM. If you have an RPM lower RPM, it is perfectly fine with the RCD. You see, the problem is if you exceed the RPM beyond two hundred, then the uh, RCD will not uh, uh, work. RCD will have limitation. So just like the rig has a limitation, as you said, you cannot go beyond 150 RPM. The, sure. This RCD cannot go beyond 200 RPM. If you want to rotate with 100 RPM or 80 RPM, 60 RPM, this is perfectly fine you know, for the for the RCD. 
So the, right. the problem is with the pressure and the RPM. There is a limitation with the pressure. For example, you cannot go beyond 2000 PSI uh, surface pressure yeah? with, the, with, any, uh, with a particular uh, RCD. You okay. cannot go, although the choke manifold is rated for 5000 PSI, but uh, here uh, the limitation is uh, the pressure rating of the RCD, rotating control device that I was just discussing. You know? So uh, if you have a Kelly, it can be used and uh, there is no need for you to use 200 RPM to drill because of the RCD. The RCD only says that, uh, the specification of the RCD only say that you can use only up to 200 RPM. You cannot go beyond that. Otherwise the seals and the hydraulic uh, you know, equipment will get damaged in that. So this is what yeah. it says. Yeah, Nathan, the, the, the question was not to the incapability of the RCD. I've been mm -hmm. using RCD, I know what it is. Mm -hmm. but, uh, the capacity of the Kelly rig to provide you to 200 uh, RPM is 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 it's not uh, beyond this capacity, of the, especially in the old Kelly rig. So mm -hmm. it's the main mm -hmm. concern regarding the MPD equipment uh, to be rigged up with the Kelly rig. Uh, yeah, there, is, there, there are other concerns also uh, with the Kelly rig. Uh, see, see, I have been in uh, operations where we don't we don't use, we don't drill with, even if you have a top drive, we don't use 200 RPM. Is quite on the higher side, so using 100 to 150 RPM anywhere anywhere between that, and then you have other options like using turbine, you know, using motors, you know, uh, you know, in your BHA. If you have six and a half, down, if you have a yeah. six and a half drill pipe, yeah, you can go even with 250 RPM. You can go up to higher RPM, uh, but uh, the, it has got another uh, you know other challenges. You yeah, but I know it's 180 is the maximum most of the time, but if you're drilling mm -hmm. with this, there's a large drill pipe, large diameter of drill pipe, like six and a half. Yeah. Sometime. yeah. Anyway, thank you very yeah. much for your sharing. No, that is great. Very great points. You know, I mean, let, let's proceed to the hydraulic side. This is, this is some other interesting right. topics that we're going to discuss. You know, that you guys sure will like it. Mr. Nathan, we have uh, three other participants that want to ask questions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just one, just one quick question. You, you can hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay, attendee from the from the Caribbean side. Um, quick question. In one of your slides, one of your very interested slides, um, when you talk about the, the, the comparison between the conventional MPD and the U, UBD. UBD. Yeah. With, with respect to the MPD, um, how much of a of a, a difference is it um applicable to when you're doing horizontal drilling? Or is it the same? Same um, procedure. Yeah, yeah. Most of the wells we drill now are deviated or horizontal wells. So I think uh, it's it's it is same. Uh, usually, most of these wells are deviated and horizontal. If you are using horizontal well, especially uh, in uh, offshore and other environment, most of the wells are deviated. So you do usually plan your mud system, which is uh, near your bore pressure, very close to your bore pressure. Suppose if it is 12 ppg, you you start with 12 ppg. And then you apply surface back pressure mm -hmm. uh, of uh, 200, 300 psi, and see how much you you get your equivalent mud weight at different points in your well, mm -hmm. at different points in your well, and then you see if it is it satisfies uh, your uh, you know requirement in terms of uh, having enough pressure not to mm -hmm. invite any influx. Okay, okay, understood. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have also Mahmoud Hassan. Mahmoud Hassan, we can go next. Yeah, tell me. Mahmoud. Maybe you need to unmute. Mahmoud have like six six questions in the discussion. Okay. So um shall we proceed or yes, if you can. Very good. So let's jump into this topic called uh, managed pressure drilling hydraulics now. So we have like uh, us, six uh, questions in the discussion. Sorry? We have six questions from Mahmoud in uh, the discussion. In the, in, the, in the comments box, you mean? Yes. Uh, I didn't see them. Uh, I'm not able to see those because uh, there will be too many screens for me to... Yeah. Okay, so... I you want to read them? Mm -hmm. Yes, I... Okay, I will copy paste them. Okay. Chat, let me open the chat then. Okay, one minute. Okay. Okay, let me just read. Uh, okay, uh, how? 
Okay, okay, good. How how is a well can be uh, an MPD candidate? What is the difference between uh, HPHT, MPD, and normal MPD? How would you? These are the questions, right? Um, Abdul? Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, um, uh, like I said, you have to see if the well has got complexities uh, to be used for a, as an MPD candidate. If there is a narrow operating window, uh, like I discussed in the very beginning, then this can become a good candidate. If there are too many losses, then it can become a good candidate. If there are uh, high pressure, high temperature environment, just like you mentioned, when there is very high temperature, then it can affect your fluid. High temperature, high pressure can affect your fluid compressibility, expansion, all those things happen. So you need to dynamically adjust the pressure in the well. Uh, what high pressure, high temperature does essentially to your drilling fluid is that it, it uh, expands the fluid because of the temperature and the pressure can cause compression. So what you decided, sir, at uh, you know your lab in the surface and, uh, and the behavior of the fluid may change down hole. And this can cause a bit of a challenge. So at such high temperature, the, the effect on the fluid is significant. So you may, at, like we did some studies when you actually have pumping 13 PG, but when it goes down, it goes below, uh, you know, 12.5 PG. So this is a significant difference. So you need MPD in this case where you can actually, and this can magnify further when uh, the dynamic uh, process, you know, when you have fluid is continuously exposed to higher temperature, it can further uh, expand and it can uh, reduce, you know, its pressure. So <clears throat> what can happen is, uh, so you need MPD in this situation, uh, basically. Uh, another thing that you need to keep in mind when you are doing high pressure, high temperature is, is the choice of your elastomer that we just discussed. Some of the rubber elements in your RCD, they need to design for that temperature. So in HPHT condition, what type of temperature your uh, equipment will see, you need to accordingly plan. Uh, that, that is the difference between HPHT and normal. More higher planning is required for HPHT compared to normal MP. So how do you Proceed uh, after MPD drilling uh, any section, cement completions, well bore clean out, and the operations. Yeah, this is a good point. Sometimes you can uh, use MPD even to run your completion. And we have used that in an application. Actually, for running a liner, uh, you can do that. Uh, so uh, you have to run your casing or liner using uh, MPD setup, and you can continue to have your MPD setup because, in case if you have to circulate, in case if you get a kick. While running your liner, if you get a stuck pipe during running your liner or anything because of the narrow, you know, window, then you can use MPD to increase or decrease the pressure in the well. There are also managed pressure cementing uh, type of jobs. So, as you know, cement the density of the cement is much higher than the drilling fluid. There are applications of MPD for cementing as well, but they need different engineering. They need more planning. You, what you do is you actually. Uh, you replace the fluid above your cement uh, with a different fluid, call it lighter fluid. So effectively, you don't want uh, the same problem to happen while cementing. So you use managed pressure cementing. And we can discuss that uh, application. I have seen that application. I have studied that application. Uh, so you, you can either do cementing conventionally if possible, or you can use managed pressure cementing. However, it is not very common. I can tell you that for sure, uh, because uh, it requires a lot of engineering, a lot of... Um, advanced uh, activities. Uh, well work clean out, same thing, you can circulate uh, through the MPD setup while uh, before you start your cementing operation. Uh, it will, because you are handling, you are now having a light up fluid in the well, this MPD setup with surface back pressure can certainly help. If we are drilling a well using MPD, when will we decide to stop? Uh, no, stop meaning uh, so, so the, the, the depths are already decided, the section TD is already decided. So you just continue drilling your, uh, with MPD till the section TD. If you think everything is going on smoothly, uh, you can just, uh, and you're 100% sure that you do not need MPD anymore, you can ask them to you know, stop in between and proceed with conventional drilling. But usually it doesn't happen. Usually uh, they... Um, continue at least for one section. Let's say if you're doing it in half inch section or nine and a quarter, whatever may be your six and a half inch section, whatever may be the section, you just drill that section with MPD. But what you can do is either use MPD on your next well or not, depending on how things progressed. 
but on that particular section this particular well you probably would use it at least in that section and depending on the benefits that you get you will decide whether to continue in the next section continue on the next well or not so if uh, we encounter a kick uh, what are the limitations when we decide uh, we should continue drilling especially in hpst deep water well yeah it's a very very good point uh, uh, so there are we will discuss about this in the subsequent slide in mpd well planning we usually uh, make a well control matrix in that if we encounter a kick we will usually try to handle that kick you know in summary actually this is how you it will be using the mpd setup but if the volume of the kick is very high uh, higher than a certain limit that we have set then we immediately switch over to the conventional well control that is either we will use uh, we will close your mpd line transfer uh, you know you shut your bop and use your choke line to circulate the kick out while pumping to your uh, drill pipe uh, using either drillers method or wait and wait and uh, wait and wait method yeah so these are uh, you know some of the points that are there and then i think there is one more question here if we decide to proceed with well kill what are the well kill techniques possible i think i just answered this you know if you if you get an influx more than two barrel or three barrel and your system has detected that then you usually switch over to conventional well control your mpd system will not be able to handle this uh, so you go back uh, you just uh, route your you know you close your bop uh, annular bop or your ram bop and then you go to uh, circulate through the kill line so i think uh, how i hope i answered your questions uh, and we will be, and i think as we uh, as we discuss uh, uh, uh let me let us see if the time permits i will also uh, discuss the influx management envelope i have got some slides on that as well yes yes we will do that yeah thanks okay gentlemen so this was the next topic in our agenda today that is managed pressure spring hydraulics this is to give you an overview about how uh, how conventional drilling and managed pressure drilling uh, are different in terms of hydraulics now as most of us know in conventional drilling hydraulic means hydrostatic pressure uh, or, uh plus annular friction pressure losses in terms of mathematical equation you have your annular friction pressure loss so bottom mole pressure again if you break it down further it is this constant of 0.052 it divided into your drilling uh, depth in qvd your annual friction pressure loss is the friction pressure loss uh, gradient into your drill depth md this is measured depth this is tvd so these are the two things that we have that gives you your bottom hole pressure and by changing your mud weight uh, or by changing your uh, you know this friction pressure gradient you can change your bottom hole pressure now what we do in mpd is we have got this third component as surface back pressure surface back pressure and uh, your hydrostatic pressure and friction pressure loss and surface back pressure and um, so the bottom hole pressure is a function of now your hydrostatic pressure your annual friction pressure loss and surface back pressure so the equation changes like this we all know this uh, i think this is uh, this mathematical equation uh, and uh, these are these these are all field units so these units have to be kept in mind this is in uh, pressure is in psi mud weight is in ppg and uh, you know depth is in feet so this uh, this uh, pressure is this is how you generally calculate your pressure and uh, you know this is how you measure your bottom of pressure uh, hydrostatic pressure now the friction pressure calculation is slightly complicated that it involves many factors and let's quickly have a look at it what friction pressure loss is uh, basically this is occurs this occurs with the resistance of uh fluid that flows into the pipe drill strings uh, surface pipes etc and through the annular space between your well bore and your drill string the friction uh, between the fluid and the pipe surface creates pressure against the pump so all of this pressure that i in the drill string in your surface pipe in your bed in your annular space between well bore and drill string it creates a friction and it creates a pressure against your pump you know? so what are the 
function, what are the parameters that are responsible for your friction pressure loss? So they are your flow rate, your fluid rheology, your flow regime, whether it is laminar flow or turbulent flow. What is the flow area? What, how much is the area available? What is the length of uh, flow path? Uh, is it, how long is it? So all of these functions that are used. And there are several mathematical models uh, that are available to calculate these friction pressure losses. Uh, and uh, that depends on your mud rheology. So when you calculate your mud rheology, when you calculate the mud rheology, you check which rheological uh, model it satisfies. For example, if you test a particular mud and you use a software by the readings, you will know that whether this mud is satisfying Bingham plastic model or Herschel Buckley model or power law. These are some of the models commonly rheological models and they have their mathematical equations to calculate annular friction pressure loss. But for the purpose of simplicity, for the purpose of general discussion of today's topic, we will just see Bingham plastic. The other models are also same. And nowadays a lot of uh, computer softwares are available to calculate that. I have used many of them, but it all starts by measuring uh, the rheological property of a mud system. You check it in the lab and then you decide which rheological, prop, which rheological model it uh, follows. And then from there, you ultimately decide, uh, determine how much, uh, you know, what kind of friction pressure it will create in the annulus. The obvious idea is that the friction pressure should be less. So uh, it, there is less resistance. I mean, so let's get started with the basics. The, the thing is that the flow regime in your, uh, uh, in your annulus could, or drill pipe could be either laminar or turbulent. And uh, to decide that, we have a uh, you know, dimensionless number called Reynolds number that, uh, you know, that you have to determine whether that will give you whether this flow is laminar or turbulent. If your Reynolds number is less than uh, uh, basically uh, 2100, uh, then your flow is a laminar. And if your Reynolds number is greater than 2100, your flow regime is turbulent. Now, how do you calculate Reynolds number? This is a mathematical equation that you use to calculate Reynolds number. This is available in a lot of textbooks. Uh, I've just taken it from there. Uh, NRE is, uh, uh, you know, uh, this constant uh, multiplied by your density and in uh, you know, velocity. It, you have your diameter of the pipe and then you have your plastic viscosity. So these are some of the parameters here. Uh, diameter, ID, OD, if you have, if you're in annulus, then you have your, uh, you know, pipe diameter and you have your whole diameter. So that's how you have your D2 and D1 and D2. And uh, for your velocity, fluid velocity, again, you have these equations here. So the, essentially, uh, these are the equations that you would use to manually calculate uh, your uh, basically pressure loss in annulus, uh, which is uh, in, lam in case of laminar flow, you would use these equations in case of turbulent flow in these equations. So you use uh, these equations to decide whether your flow, your flow regime is laminar or turbulent. And then you use these equations. Uh, if your laminar flow use these equations, turbulent flow these equations. Now, again, this is for Bingham plastic model. If you are using other models, then there are other equations that are already available in uh, you know, various uh, references. So, in general, this is how uh, the difference between Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid. Most of the fluids that we discussed, they deal with uh, in terms of drilling fluid, they are non-Newtonian fluid they are also who, who uh, need some uh, initial pressure to initiate motion. But Newtonian fluids, they don't need, so they, are, they exhibit this kind of linear behavior. So uh, in general, uh, during routine drilling operations, you would expect uh, inside the drill string to be turbulent flow and inside uh, the annulus to be laminar flow. But this is just a quick reference. You need to calculate the Reynolds number uh, by using these equations here uh, to, to know whether the flow regime is laminar or turbulent. This is all part of standard drilling. Uh, uh, it's just in MPD, you need to be a bit more uh, particular about what kind of fluid you're using, what kind of annual pressure you have, because you need to then decide how much surface back pressure you would be applying. So here is an example of uh, a mathematical exercise is pretty simple for all us engineers. So <clears throat> you will see here that uh, by using this equation and using these values, uh, the, the Reynolds number was 6,000, uh, you know, 302, which was greater than uh, 2100, which is uh, the threshold for uh, 
uh, turbulent flow. So then it was decided that it was uh, you know turbulent flow. But and again in the annulus by using this equation we got the Reynolds number as one seven four three. So the the flow was laminar flow in the annulus. But this is just one example. In every scenario in every well you need to calculate you need to find out what are the uh, flow regimes. And then after that you substitute these values in the, the calculations here and you determine velocity in the pipe and pressure drop in the pipe. So in this case, uh, the pressure drop in the pipe was a pressure drop gradient is 0 0.860 PSI per foot. And if you multiply that with, uh, let's say, 1,000 foot uh, length, then you would get 807 PSI total pressure drop. Uh, similarly, uh, you here is another example, which I have uh, done some calculations to give you some pressure drop in annulus. In this case here, it is 260 PSI. So this is how you use to calculate and we'll probably share this uh, slide deck for you to review later on. No? These calculations, just standard mathematical calculations values, substitute them in these equations and you will determine what was the pressure drop. Now, if uh, for a vertical well, if 0 0.02 PSI per foot was your pressure drop, uh, then uh, your annual friction pressure, total annual friction pressure would be 200 PSI. Uh, and uh, then if you calculate uh, the friction pressure loss in the annulus, uh, it will be in a, in, a, in a well like this, then the depth in this case is in, in measured depth is 16,350 PSI. So it is 327 PSI. You are going to take measured depth, not TVD for friction pressure loss calculations. So this is how you usually manually calculate the friction pressure loss. In the real world, you have a software and you know tools available for you. So you don't really do these manual calculations. Also, you measure friction pressure loss when you're actually pumping uh, through the system. When, you, when you're pumping, you get to know what is the hydrostatic pressure and your friction pressure loss uh, against the pump. So you're always monitoring and measuring that. So you ma measure, you calculate using software and this is how it goes. So the, some of the points to remember uh, as far as friction pressure loss is concerned is uh, you have your friction pressure loss in the pipe, you have your friction pressure loss in the annulus. For the purpose of bottom pressure loss, you only take friction pressure loss in the annulus, not in the drill pipe. The friction pressure loss in the drill pipe is basically mainly for you to determine how much your pressure your pump is going to see. But for our bottom pressure calculations, you need to know friction pressure loss in the annulus. Now, uh, what is the, just some of the main points to remember, friction pressure loss is a function of length of pipe or annulus, diameter of the pipe, or size of the annulus, low rate, uh, fluid properties such as density, viscosity, yield point, and rheology. Yeah? So these are some of, the, some of the points that you need to keep in mind, your density of the fluid, viscosity, yield point, and rheology. Yeah, these are some of the parameters that the mud engineer keeps checking all the time. You need to be with him. If you are part of the drilling operation, you need to be with him, make sure he checks all these things and gives the, gives the data to you so that you have accurate assessment of friction pressure loss in the annulus. This is then, then after that, you can calculate how, if you need any surface back pressure, how much surface back pressure you need, and we will see all that you know, in this session. Although there are several sophisticated models for friction pressure loss predictions, observed pressure may be different from predicted ones. You see, the model has got the data that you have input that you have inserted in them. You basically have the hole size, you basically have the casing size, you basically have the fluid properties, but what happens down hole is slightly different from what you have in the model. The hole may be bigger than what you have uh, uh, actually considered. The, there is deformation in the casing, and there is a washout in the drill pipe, you know, the size of the drill pipe, actual size is different from what your standard size. So. So many of these change and you may see different readings and you need to be aware about this fact. So <clears throat> this is the point that I already did. Now let's take this, discuss this element of surface back pressure in our uh, uh, <clears throat> MPD setup. So surface back pressure. So what is surface back pressure? Uh, you will hear this very frequently when you're doing MPD that uh, surface back pressure is X, Y, so MPD choke requires flow through it for the entire drilling. So when you want to close or open the choke uh, by applying surface back, or apply surface back pressure, it needs to have flow through it. Now, even if 100% uh, open MPD system will generate surface back pressure uh, because it has got uh, pressure losses in MPD system itself. So 
so the closing and opening of the choke plus the pressure loss in the mpd system upstream of mpd system downstream of mpd system all of this contributes to surface back pressure uh, in general you measure this when you start your mpd operation how much the surface back pressure uh, in an mpd system is going to apply it could be 40 50 60 psi so even if you are not closing your choke your choke is 100% open the mpd system itself will generate some surface back pressure onto your well and you should be aware about this fact and not only about this fact you should be aware about uh, the value of how much surface back pressure the mpd system is applying on your well and uh, if the flow rate is changed the surface back pressure uh, loss in the mpd system will also change so you should measure at different flow rates uh, that you would be usually using to deal a particular section so the bottom wall pressure as we discussed earlier in mpd system is a function of hydrostatic pressure which we just discussed annual friction pressure loss which we just discussed and surface back pressure that we are going to discuss now so bottom wall pressure in a well is a function of these three components. So uh, in this situation, we will consider these four scenarios which are common to an MPD setup. Yeah. So we will discuss a static bottom wall pressure when there is no surface back pressure, which is essentially just your hydrostatic pressure in your well, pressure exerted by your mud column. Then you have your static bottom wall pressure while maintaining surface back pressure. So you are not circulating, you are not doing any uh, pumping operation. You are just having a bottom wall pressure and your surface back pressure. This is a typical scenario when you're doing a connection. When you do a pipe connection, you compensate the loss of your annual friction pressure uh, with your surface back pressure. So the whole idea of discussing this uh, topic of friction pressure loss here of 320 PSI as an example of this is because you should be aware about this. Why? Because in an MPD system, when you stop circulation uh, for making pipe connection, you lose this 300 PSI uh, in the well. And what you do is then you use your choke manifold to compensate for this, uh, basically. So you, you increase your surface back pressure to adjust uh, the loss of friction pressure loss during connection. So this is one scenario in an MPD setup where you have your bottom up pressure and surface back pressure. Now there are dynamic scenarios where you have bottom up pressure I mean, but your choke is wide open, you're drilling, and there is no surface back pressure. Also, you have scenarios where you're drilling, and you're drilling with uh, mud weight on the choke. So you are actually having surface back pressure while you're drilling. So there are many scenarios in an MPD, and you need to consider all these things uh, in your planning process. Therefore, it takes two to three weeks, generally, for an engineer to go through all these scenarios. Uh, what are the realistic, what are the uh, starting with all the basics, but, and then you have to advise your customer, or if you're a customer, you need to also get involved in this and um, and find and see what the MPD guys are doing. Are they coming up with realistic scenarios for you? Are they giving you the right uh, you know, information? The surface back pressure, the annular friction pressure, you need to do your own calculations and tell them we, we might be having this much of friction pressure loss because this is the mud that we are trying to use, etc. So, um, in this scenario, this we already discussed. Uh, you know, when you are when you don't have surface back pressure, then you are like basically you're pretty much like uh, conventional drilling. But you need to keep in mind that your MPD system will also apply some back pressure. So you may have to keep that uh, in your calculations. So, and uh, <clears throat> with surface back pressure, what will happen is your hydrostatic pressure and your surface back pressure will get added to it. You are not circulating, there is no annular friction pressure loss, but you have your hydrostatic pressure and you have your surface back pressure. And in dynamic conditions, you have all these three components uh, that we just discussed. So let us see uh, the various scenarios in a graphical way. What happens is uh, now in the very first scenario, this one, the green line is just your static mud weight. You can see here how uh, the, the arrow is not pointing. Uh, my apologies, I think it has got you know, moved around a little bit. The, but, but the green line here is, is showing your static mud column that is you're not circulating, you're not applying any back pressure. Now, here, your the blue line is dynamic. When the blue line is solid dynamic, what happens is uh, you have uh, uh, pressure, annular friction pressure of 0 0.03 PSI per foot. And it applies, it is, this is how, uh, you know, the pressure in the well increases when you start circulating. 
now what happens now you have uh, you are doing an mpd connection so to compensate for this 0.03 psi per foot you have applied a 300 psi surface back pressure and the pressure profile in the well will be like this dotted line it is different from uh, you have your static and your dynamic and uh, the, then what what you did was uh, you all, you have a dynamic you know whatever pressure assuming both 0.03 psi per foot annular friction pressure loss and 300 psi surface back pressure so these are just these are some of the uh, pressures that you will see and scenarios now you have your static plus water mole pressure and then you have dynamic plus surface back pressure uh, static plus surface back pressure so in totality this is how it will work and this will just give you a summarized uh, way how how the how the pressure in the well will change along the uh, depth so if we are considering here that the well is 10000 feet deep now let's uh, review this concept of equivalent mud weight how many slides we have left here because i think it is 11:30 so we could have we may uh, we can take a small break in about 10 minutes once i finish this we'll take a break uh, I think we'll finish this. There's not much left here. Uh, so uh, pressure can be converted into equivalent mud weight as follows. Uh, most of the time, the pressure profile is measured in uh, equivalent mud weight. So you have your pressure and divided by this constant and the depth. Uh, we know this equation. So there, there is uh, two things. One is equivalent static density and one is equivalent circulatory density. So in e the equivalent static density, uh, in the case of uh, MPD, if you have surface back pressure is uh, calculated with this mathematical equation and the equivalent uh, static density uh, let's uh, calculate this equivalent static density for different depths this is what you would do normally uh, when you are planning mpd in this scenario we are considering uh, that you are drilling with full ppg mud system while maintaining 300 psi surface back pressure this is just one scenario scenario that you are considering and uh, you're drilling, so you have a uh, annular friction pressure loss. So what you would do is when you stop drilling, that is stop circulating, uh, you increase your surface back pressure to 600 PSI to compensate the loss of annular friction pressure. Current depth is 10,000 PSI later and the casing setting depth, is, uh, previous casing setting is 300 PSI. This is just one example of how you would typically plan. So you are, uh, now this is at 3,000. What would be your equivalent static density uh, at 3,000 PSI? Uh, so at 3,000 feet, uh, it is 15.85 ppg. Uh, as you go deeper, you can see that your equivalent static density is uh, going down, is dropping. So your static mud weight is 12 ppg, and your equivalent uh, has increased instead of decreasing you know, or, or remaining constant. So at your facing point, your equivalent static density here is higher that is 15.85 bpg and you need to aware about this fact so you cannot just increase your surface back pressure uh, at your will uh, to any level even though it is within the pressure rating you also need to see what would be the pressure at your previous uh, casing setting depth and if it is higher then the fracture gradient of your equivalent if or, or the if of your previous casing setting depth then you need to Consider this in your planning. And make sure that it doesn't exceed a pressure limit. And uh, this is just to give you an idea what the pump pressure and various uh, depths, uh, different different uh, places where you will encounter the friction pressure loss in your surface equipment, in your drill pipe, in your drill collar, in your annulus between you know, open hole and drill collars, in your annulus, in the practical. Uh, world, you would be uh, considering pressure losses across all these points. Uh, annulus, uh, you know, open hole, basically between cased hole and drill pipe, and uh, cased hole and drill collar. If your, uh, you know, drill collars, so different geometries and different pressure losses, and you have to calculate all these. And usually, the software or your spreadsheets would do it, but normally, you know, these are different points where you would get the pressure loss. 
So equivalent circulating density, most of us would have heard about it, but again, ECD will change uh, the definition and the calculations of ECD change when uh, we are dealing with uh, MPD. So however, only pressure drop in the annulus uh, plus the hydrostatic pressure applied in the well bore are considered for bottom of pressure measurement. So it, although there are pressure loss across various points, but in the annulus, uh, you know, you need to consider this. So in MPD UV operations, surface back pressure is also applied along the two pressures, uh, along the pressures. So let's look at uh, the definition of ECD in the context of MPD. Now, what you have here is you have another component of surface back pressure. So the, the equation of ECD changes, uh, you have your static mud weight, annual friction pressure loss, surface back pressure, your constant and your depth in TVD. This is how your uh, uh, calculation of ECD is done. Uh, here we have some uh, expressions and uh, general calculations that you can have a look. Uh, you know, I will share the slide deck with you. Now, when you're static, you just um, you just put uh, the surface back, or when you're not applying any surface back pressure, uh, you just put this as zero, and uh, then you calculate your ECD basically for all the values when you have a surface back pressure as zero. But uh, uh, the, the, so your ECD is constant along the well bore when you don't have surface back pressure. Uh, it's just like uh, your ECD will increase like this, you know, when you're drilling, it's constant. And when, you, uh, when you're static, <coughs> your uh, mud weight is still BPG. But when you're drilling, you take into account annular friction pressure loss and your ECD is slightly more than 12.5 BPG. But the, if you have surface back pressure of 300 PSI, then this is how your ECD will uh, affect uh, your pressure in the well. And uh, you see here, this is how the ECD will change. So in general, uh, these are some of the calculations that you need to keep in mind when you are uh, doing your analysis for MPD as engineers, you'll be doing a lot of these analysis uh, in your uh, you know, planning phase and coming up with the right parameters, right values as we go. So in general, just a few points to remember that uh, we, we, we need to keep in mind a, a certain four, four common scenarios are that you have a mud system in the well with no surface back pressure. You may have a mud system in the well without circulation, but you have surface back pressure. You are circulating, you are drilling uh, without applying any surface back pressure. And then you are drilling when you are having surface back pressure. So these are some of the common scenarios. There may be more scenarios that you generate in your uh, you know, planning process. This is how you do typically in um, any planning uh, you know, stage. So you have your flow rate here, 200, 250, 300, 350. You have your hydrostatic pressure at a shoe, casing shoe. You have your surface back pressure, 600, 500, 433, 400, different surface back pressure. You are considering here based on these flow rates. Your you your flow rate will affect your friction pressure loss. So this friction pressure loss changes here. Total pressure at shoe has to be constant. So you see here 10,000 psi. ECD at shoe also has to be constant. This is the whole purpose of using MPD. ECD at TD perhaps changes varies a little bit, but it's relatively constant. You know, available pressure before reaching 14 point. 2 ppg. This is your pressure, uh, maximum pressure that you can have your at your casing shoe. So now you have another 500 psi that you can apply because you need to find out how much maximum pressure you can apply in a well, and then accordingly plan backwards. Uh, so in, in a typical uh, planning process, this is how you would. Uh, you would uh, plan, you start with your mud weight, uh, that is 12.5 BPG. You set your target, that is 13.5 BPG. Now in this case, your target is at shoe, uh, casing shoe. And uh, then you plan your uh, systems accordingly. Now in static condition, now this was a dynamic condition. In static condition, your flow rate is zero. The hydrostatic pressure at shoe is uh, same, it needs to be same because you don't want to change half life pressure fluctuation. So you need to have the same pressure. Here, your surface back pressure has increased now dramatically, not dramatically, but it has increased considerably because you're compensating for annual friction pressure loss. Total pressure is again same, 
equivalent motivated should be same and a td also as you can see it is lower than what uh, you had it before and your available surface back pressure is also the same which is 500 542 uh, before you reach uh, this point of 14.2 pg which is the maximum point in uh, at your at your shoe after which you will fracture the shoe so this is what you have you know in one case of the, in uh, uh, as of this thing so gentlemen let's take a break of 15 minutes if you guys want to have a coffee or some snack or something like that and what time is it now it is 11 um, 41 so abdul are you able to hear me we can take a break for 15 minutes yes okay good um so we'll start again at um, 12 o'clock is that okay 12 just before 12 okay 12 o'clock yes yeah 12 o'clock okay thank you gentlemen So thank you all for for your presence and we will come back in 12 o'clock we will start back. Yeah.
So it's 12 o'clock. We, we can start. You, let's start. So gentlemen, if you have any quick questions on the previous session, right, please uh, let me know. Just brief questions or short ones, you know, otherwise we will, we have a lot of topics to cover today. Can have three types one is startup procedures operational procedures contingency procedures in the startup procedures you have all these things that you need to do one is the the pressure testing of the system itself fingerprinting in casing test testing all the sensors recording mpd system pressure loss calibrate pump efficiency uh, Comparison and calibration of PWD data. PWD data is a tool. PWD is a tool that is installed in your BHA along with your LWD. It uh, basically measures uh, bottom hole pressure, bottom hole temperature, and uh, also gives you uh, equivalent circulating density, equivalent mud weight, and all those things. So you get this data while you're drilling, while you're static. Uh, you have this as your. Or calibrate your surface back pressure to apply surface back pressure. So this has to be checked before you start actually start uh, uh, drilling with MPD. You also have to check the effect of pipe moment on flow and pressures at different speed. Uh, this is to make sure that you normally when you drill with MPD, you have a, a narrow operating margin. So you have a chances of swab and surge pressures. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, you need to do this, you know, and you need to simulate losses, you need to simulate influx, and so on. So this is the actual uh, PNID uh, that uh, our friend was referring to. Now, my earlier diagram was a very, very basic elementary diagram. It did not cover all the uh, lines, you know, but in a real MPD scenario, you guys would be dealing with a more uh, detailed diagram like this, this is called as a pressure and instrumentation diagram. Here you have each and every line. You know? Now you can see here, this is your primary flow line. This is your uh, this is your line going to your rig choke manifold. This is another line going to your rig choke manifold. And uh, uh, you have your standpipe manifold. You have uh, your uh, lines coming from your cellar pit uh, or going to the cellar pit rather, uh, you know, if you have any, uh, any fluid that, uh, you it goes to you want to you want to put it in the cellar pit. This is your circulation line. This is your main uh, flow from your standpipe, and uh, <clears throat> this is the MPD choke manifold here. Um, in this line, uh, this is this is a busy diagram. It will take a while for everybody to kind of get a hang of it. But when when you when you actually have it, uh, this is your Coriolis meter. This is your gas detection system. This is a new system. They call it a GC tracer. Uh, some of you might have heard about it. And now you can see here, the, one of the line is going to trip tank, a line is going to the shell, shell shaker, and your uh, one of the line is going to So there are plenty of uh, options and combinations available here on a real MP setup uh, that uh, you will, uh, you know, you will have. Uh, and you will discuss this various times with your uh, uh, client to make sure that uh, they are uh, fully aware about it and they are agreeing to it because a uh, lot of modification, a lot of rig up is required to carry out this. <clears throat> so essentially, what I was saying was, uh, and we will discuss this, uh, you, uh, if um, you use MPD for well control, uh, if you get a well get into a well controlled situation, and if it exceeds your MPD pressure limits, then you close your BOP here, and then you circulate your kick out using the rig choke manifold as normal. And then if you see here, there is two BOPs. In some cases, they have two BOPs. 
So you either use this BOP or this BOP. And it goes on like this. So what is the MPD system pressure testing? As most of the MPD equipment is rigged up off the critical path, the rig pressure test pump will be used for pressure testing the manifold and all associated downstream lines and valves. So let's go back here. Now, all of this equipment that we are seeing here will be rigged up. Uh, will be rigged up <coughs> offline. You the the drilling operation or whatever operation is going on at that time will continue, and you guys will rig up this setup while you are, uh, you know, uh, without having an interruption to the drilling setup. So you will what you will do is essentially you will. Uh, uh, you will rig up this part, you will rig up this part, you will connect all these lines, these lines, these line up to here, yeah? And then wait till you have an opportunity to put the bowl. The, the time you need to install this RCD, you need uh, to stop the operations. But all of this rig up and pressure testing can be done offline. So this is something that you have to keep in mind when you're discussing with anybody that we will not uh, cause any interruption to the drilling operation. We will do this offline. And uh, then this one, obviously we'll need, uh, you need to stop the drilling operation or tripping operation or casing ending operation, cementing, any, any operation that you're doing needs to be on it. And this RCD and the line is connected. All these lines, other lines, other interfaces are done usually offline. So, so uh, now prior to doing anything, you need to have a permit to work. Uh, as most of you might know, permit to work is an important activity uh, or important uh, document that you need to uh, complete. And you need to do a toolbox talk within your people and with the rig crew. So whenever you are going to start all these rig up operations, although it is offline, although it doesn't involve any, any rig uh, people to uh, any, any interruption to the rig operation, you need to involve everybody because now you are starting something new on the rig that the rig crew is not fully aware about. A lot of discussions have happened, but no discussion with the rig crew so far. So rig crew doesn't know what you're doing. So you need to go there and have a, something what is called as a toolbox stuff. Uh, you need to do this and you need to do this, permit to work. Permit to work system is uh, something that uh, some of you might know, uh, but it is, uh, it is <coughs> a permit start any work. Suppose if you are going to do any welding work, then you need hot work permit. If you are going to do any um, excavation work, then you need a permit to do excavation. If you are doing an electrical job, then you need to have that kind of a permit. So the rig has its own definition. The oil company will have its definition. Your employer will also have its definition. And you need to issue that permit to work. Make sure that everything that you are going to do is documented in that and uh, toolbox stock is assigned. And the most importantly, a sign needs to be posted along with the barrier chain to advise personnel of the ongoing operation. So whenever you are doing all these activities, you need to barricade this place with the barrier tape and post a sign over there to say that uh, there is work going on. Suppose if you are doing pressure testing of a particular uh, system here, you need to mention that because you are dealing with high pressure and people need to know about it, that they, don't, they shouldn't come. Otherwise a friend or somebody will come, just walk past and see what, the, what these guys are doing uh, etc. And uh, they will end up, uh, you know, getting involved in a dangerous situation. So uh, you need a pressure test pump, uh, both uh, to do high pressure and low pressure. You need a chart recorder, a electronic or a manual, a physical one to record the pressure. And um, you need to uh, make sure that uh, nobody enters in that area. Uh, so barrier chain has to be erected and you need to anou also announce on the PS system about <clears throat> the fact that you are doing pressure testing. And um, if you see any leaks, uh, then you need to uh, fix all those lines again and then do re-pressure testing. Now, once you do complete your pressure testing and you have fully uh, uh, rigged up all the equipment, you need to go and do fingerprinting or encasing test. How is that done? Uh, fingerprinting is done uh, basically, uh, when you are at shoe, when you are drilling, uh, when you are, uh, you know, before you drill out the shoe, so when you are still inside the casing, and these exercises will be performed uh, basically to record various parameters and to ensure that all the 
all the systems are functioning normally. This is also a time to execute drills with the rig crew and practice operations that will ensure later in the drill that you'll encounter in the uh, you know drilling field. So this is the time when you when you make the rig crew aware about the various operations. Okay, so the rig crew today uh, a lot of them still don't know. I mean, you'll be lucky find that some of them have been in MPD operations or even if they have been, it has been some time. So it is, uh, you know, the responsibility of the MPD <laughs> supervisor, the MPD engineer to uh, do some exercises on the rig and uh, ensure that uh, they are aware about it. So this is where, this is one of the, one of the function, one of the requirements of a fingerprinting and encasing test. So while circulating at uh, you know range of pump rates, you, you, you know the possible pumping rates that you will be doing uh, for drilling a particular section. So you need to record surface back pressure and uh, standpipe pressure at those circulating drill. And check all the sensors and input from mud loggers console, from uh, cementer, from MWD, WD, weights, mud engineer, and calibrate them accurately. So, you, so there are some sensors, you will see them coming from MPD. There are some, <clears throat> there is some data that you get from mud loggers, some data you get from MWD, WD. So, you are getting a whole lot of data in your system and uh, you need to make sure that it is accurate and calibrated properly. So what are the MPD system uh, parameters? So MPD system usually has these parameters here in the list. You have your surface back pressure, your standpipe pressure, your wallet pressure, your rig pump counter one, counter two, counter three, flow out, flow out, density out. So these are all the parameters. It's a detailed list and uh, you need to check each and every of them whether it is working properly or not. What are the calculated parameters either calculated in your system or mud logging system that you are getting? These are all. Bottom of friction pressure, bottom of temperature. These are all calculated uh, by your uh, software, uh, TVD, et cetera. So then, uh, then you also get some parameters from mud loggers, uh, which is uh, they have these sensors for the bit depth, for the hole depth, for the RPM, ROP, weight on weight, foot load, gas units. PWD pressure, PWD. And pressure, et cetera. So you get this uh, data from them because you need this for your, uh, for your uh, system uh, to calculate all various things. So you need to record system pressure losses when you're doing your fingerprinting. The system pressure, uh, you know, will be recorded through all available flow paths, line of MPD equipment, primary flow line, uh, and then uh, open the choke, close the choke, bring pumps to 50% rate, then repeat by 100%. So like this, you record system pressure loss. And then you calibrate the pump efficiency uh, by uh, following this process. Uh, it's, it's Here, uh, you, you, uh, you use different method to calibrate your pump efficiency. Uh, as most of us know, pump efficiency is a factor that you always multiply through your pump uh, you know, calculations of uh, GPM. And uh, you will have uh, here what you do is you pump to the MPD system to Coriolis meter and uh, you change your pump uh, for different speeds and you check if your flow in and flow out is equal. If not, uh, you adjust a, a factor to make it equal. Flow in is calculated using your pumps, flow out is measured on your Coriolis meter. So you typically they should be equal, but in the beginning you will have some difference and that is because of the efficiency of the pump. So that will give you your measure of the efficiency of the pump. You do it for all the pumps, pump two, pump three, auxiliary pump. So these are all the points, but the actual procedure is more detailed than this. I've just summarized these points here. Now, then you compare your PWD data with your calculated values. So at normal drilling rate, with the bit is close to the bottom, uh, you know, to generate maximum ECD for comparison of the system and software calculate bottom of pressure. So uh, as we discussed earlier, if you guys remember, we there is a software that will calculate your bottom of pressure and the PWD tool is the one that will measure your bottom of pressure. This is this is good for any uh, any operations, not just MPD, but uh, <clears throat> this needs to be calculated. This needs to be compared and to ensure that your uh, calculated bottom of pressure is accurate. Why we need to do that is because Sometimes you don't get this PWD data. That time you are relying on your software uh, calculated value. Uh, either because the PWD tool has failed 
or because you are not circulating. Remember, this PWD tool data is uh, recorded in the tool, but is transmitted using mud pulse telemetry, like any other MWD data, MWD, LWD data. So the data is available only when you have proper circulation from the well. For any reason, when you are static, like for example, when you are making connection, you do not have this reading available because, because you're not circulating. So this is the time when you are actually relying only on your software calculated bottom hole pressure value. This is why it is very important for you to calibrate it right at the beginning to make sure that the measured value is uh, corresponding well with your calculated value. If the tool fails while you're drilling, there's nothing you can do about it. If the tool starts giving erratic value, there is nothing you can do about it. You just need to rely on your software because the software is still giving you the value and you're knowing what your water hole pressure is, your surface back pressure is, your annual efficient pressure is, your uh, uh, hydrostatic pressure is, all of these values you will get while you are uh, through your software and through actual measurements. But if one of the sensors doesn't work, the surface sensors, you can change it. Downhole sensors, you cannot change it. You need to wait till you trip out a hole and you replace your tool. So there are something what is called as correction factor that you need to enter in the software well model to ensure that your PWD data and your calibrated data is corresponding correctly. These are important uh, steps that you need to take right in the beginning of any MPD job of any, uh, uh, you know, any, any uh, fingerprinting encasing test uh, exercise. So these are some of the points that I just, we just discussed, you know, uh, all of this you do when you're uh, right in the beginning and uh, you, you guys just take your time and go through each and every of these points and the importance of this uh, for any operational. Now, these are all the startup procedures. These are all procedures that we do before we start any operations. What we also have is uh, operational procedures. So RCD bearing assembly installation and removal, MPD connections, flow check, displays where to light fluid, Heat detection and well control procedures, dynamic formation integrity test, dynamic port pressure test, taking flow circulation rates, <clears throat> and tripping procedures. I have listed just the main procedures. There are a lot more than this when you actually go out to do an MPD job. But these are some of the main procedures that we will discuss here quickly. So RCD bearing assembly removal uh, that we saw in one of the animations, how the bearing assembly is installed and removed. In the real uh, life, uh, this needs to be done uh, following a particular procedure. Uh, it is not just that we run in the bearing assembly and we install it in the bowl, as we saw in an animation or uh, in a couple of graphics earlier. Uh, it needs to be done in the beginning at the beginning of the job, but also when the element that we were discussing about in our discussion uh, fails. Uh, if the element fails, it starts to leak, we need to remove and change the bearing assembly. A new bearing assembly is always kept uh, available, so there is not much time lost uh, in changing the bearing assembly. The new bearing assembly, I mean, or, or a refurbished bearing assembly, a refresh bearing assembly is always kept. It is picked up, uh, lowered into the well, and the faulty one is then taken out, uh, faulty one is then laid down and uh, uh, repaired. So it consider, uh, it, uh, you know, there is a certain time for this, each bearing assembly has its own uh, life and we have to uh, make sure that before the life uh, is uh, up, you know, you have to replace it. So here are some of the key steps, you know, if, the, if conditions allow circulate at least one minimum bottoms up to clean the cuttings out of hole, ensure all cuttings are out of the hole. You don't want to have cuttings because you will have some static time in the well. So before that, you need to make sure that your hole is in otherwise, those cuttings can uh, pack off around your uh, BHA. So you need to make sure uh, your hole is clean. Then ensure a replacement bearing assembly is made up on the stand in the derrick ready to be installed. So the bearing assembly is always there. Or replacement bearing assembly is always there. But it needs to be made up on a stand uh, on, a, on, your, on your derrick ready to just run install. Basically, you, don't, uh, you pull out the old one and make up, the, you know, run in the new one. Ensure proper drill pipe space out uh, to perform RCD change out. If possible, rack back one of the stand prior to changing, uh, you know, RCD bearing assembly. Then uh, bring pumps down, follow connection procedure. You need to follow the connection procedure because this is like doing a connection. You are removing your static mode for some time. Line up MPD system uh, down to secondary MPD flow path, you know, using 
the upper choke line, all these things are specific to a particular job. You know, you have to close the rig's annular. Most importantly, you have to bleed off pressure above uh, the annular so that before you remove the bearing assembly and uh, pull out the rotary machines, remove the bearing assembly and then install back, you know, follow MPD supervisor, MPD supervisor's procedure. So in this case, the MPD supervisor is the one who usually leads the uh, leads the operational uh, you know steps. So all the other people need to just follow him. It's important to follow the main person who is actually responsible for the operation. Otherwise, if everybody starts doing everything, then it can become a chaos. These are all the detailed steps, uh, how you follow, you know, uh, uh, make sure that the bearing assembly is uh, changed out uh, properly and without any incidents. So there is another procedure, uh, which is very important, which is MPD connection. MPD connection, when you do MPD connections, what you do is you circulate and reciprocate string and to make sure that uh, the cuttings are all removed, uh, are not there around the BHA and <clears throat> your hole is clean. So when you're static, uh, the, when the drill pipe is static, uh, you don't get any uh, mechanical stuck pipe. So inform MPD operator that uh, connection is to be made and the pumps are to be shut down. So why do we need a procedure for MPD connection is because you're going to shut down the pumps. And during this time, you need to increase your surface back pressure uh, to make sure that you have the same bottom hole pressure and you're compensating for your friction pressure loss in the annulus uh, using uh, this procedure. So what you do is you record uh, you know, your parameters, the surface back, sandpaper pressure, surface back pressure, flow out, flow in, mud weight in, mud weight out. Record all these last parameters prior to connection. Then stage down your pumps as instructed by MPD operator to minimum uh, predetermined rate. That is 200 GPM. You don't turn the pumps off immediately or uh, you stage them down. You know? Start your back pressure pump. So here the back pressure pump needs to be kicked in because your MPD system will always need some flow through the chokes. So you need to start your uh, back pressure pump uh, and make sure that you have flow, uh, bring it gradually up to minimum 200 GPM and then continue to confirm flow from back pressure pump to MPD system and monitor response. This needs to be synchronized very well. Reduce string rotation to five or 10 RPM. Uh, bring uh, main pumps off gradually as instructed by MPD operator and surface back pressure should be increased to calculated connection pressure. So this is important point to note here that as you bring your uh, pumps down, you need to make sure that you increase your surface back pressure, your calculated connection pressure and uh, confirm that your pumps are off and surface back pressure has reached, uh, you know, uh, in a, and is stable or it's not fluctuating too much. So as you're bringing your pumps down, your surface back pressure has to be increased and it has to be increased to a predetermined calculated value, <clears throat> which doesn't exceed any of the pressure limits in your well that we discussed in our, our hydraulic section. So uh, then you stop your pipe rotation, set your slips, uh, Confirm pressure is zero on gauges. And if there is significant flow back, refer to MPD procedures, loss of uh, drill string integrity, et cetera. There are some other procedures that you need to refer to when you stop your pumps and you get your flow back. That means your well is flowing. And then make your connection, monitor parameters and compare with uh, you know, parameters obtained in previous connections or during fringe operating. Inform MPD operator to uh, prepare and circulation startup. You know. Start pumps at a minimum SPM of 100. Uh, basically, slowly you start and then monitor your standby pressure. Um, then the MPD operator confirms that the choke is responding. Continue to the next step. Slowly bring your mud pumps up to, uh, as per MPD operator to determine uh, you know, 200 GPM. Remember, we at 200 GPM, we, this was the minimum pressure required, minimum circulating rate required for the chokes to function. So, we have to bring it to that level. And then uh, you start opening your choke, uh, keeping the bottom of the pressure constant, gradually isolate your back pressure pump, because now your rig pumps are online, so you have to isolate your back pressure pump. And slowly bring the pump to the drilling rate, would be 350, 400 GPM, 500 GPM, whatever may be your drilling rate, just bring it to that rate uh, slowly. And uh, simultaneously, you need to monitor MPD choke response. So usually the choke is operating automatically. 
uh, in many cases. So the, you have to, but you have to keep monitoring this choke uh, response and make sure that it is gradually opening as you are uh, circulating. So confirm stable pressure and flow and reduce ECD to minimum, maximum, and average if available from the download loops. Continue with drilling operation. So this is how you do your MPD connections. This is an important step. Uh, the, uh, if you are an MPD engineer and if you are on the field, you will be in charge of this operation. It's very important because the crew, pull pusher, driller, they are not familiar with it and you need to make sure that they follow all the steps properly. Otherwise, the purpose of using MPD may not be you know, just justified properly. Flow check. Most of us know about flow check. Flow check is a process when you suspect that uh, there is an influx in the well. You do a flow check. Uh, you stop your pumps and monitor your returns. But in MPD, uh, because you have an RCD, conventional flow checks will not work because uh, well will not flow. <clears throat> well will not flow because you have an RCD. You're closing the well using RCD. Uh, so dynamic flow checks need to be done. The different flow checks need to be done and you need to discuss this with the crew uh, right in the beginning. So dynamic flow check will be performed by maintaining circulations down the drill string and monitoring flow in and flow out using the Coriolis meter on the MPT manifold. So the same applies if mud pump 3 is used to pump across the RCD. As a standard procedure, flow check should be performed at least after a drilling break, sharp torque increase, etc. So when are you when do you think you should do you if you suddenly get a drilling break and you suddenly see a sharp increase in the torque? Basically, same. Uh, conditions that you see while drilling, you need to do a flow check. So how do you do a flow check? Now you have a dynamic flow check or you have a surface flow check. You have two options uh, in uh, flow check. So dynamic flow check uh, using circulating down the drill string and holding uh, surface back pressure. Uh, then we, this will generally be done while drilling or circulating. And surface flow check when rig pumps are off, using mud pump three or the back pressure pump flow across the top of the well, holding your surface back pressure constant. This will be generally done while tripping, stripping, or when you do not have any circulation, basically. So flow check, what you do is uh, the dynamic flow check circulation uh, down the drill so requires minimum changes to the op rig operating setup. So whatever setup you have, you need to do. Space out your drill string to ensure tool joint is not in your RCD and position uh, to allow BOP to be closed if required. So your drill pipe has to be spaced out properly such that the tool joint is not across either your RCD or your BOP. Then you reduce your RPM uh, by 10 to, uh, uh, to 10 to 20. So you are rotating but uh, very, very slowly. Maintain circulation at current rate. Set up uh, a set system to dynamic flow check. So the software, uh, your uh, has <coughs> a way to set it up to dynamic flow check. Continue for a minimum of 15 minutes, monitor flow in and flow out trends. And if flow check indicates a flow disturbance, repeat flow check or evaluate for the next step. So here you, you are essentially doing flow check in your using your uh, Coriolis meter. And I would like to say that actually in an MPD uh, configuration or a setup, you are always doing a flow check. You're always doing flow check because you're always monitoring flow out. On the rig, uh, you do have a flow out sensor and a trip tank sensor, but uh, though, as I was saying earlier, uh, the level of accuracy is not the same. Uh, on completion of successful flow check, return to normal parameters for drilling or tripping. Uh, so this is an example of flow check. I hope uh, you know it is making uh, some good sense in, in, the, in a way that how it is different from normal flow check and uh, how, how we can uh, do it more accurately. The next uh, procedure that we will see here is uh, displacing well to lighter fluid. Now, why do we need to do this? Usually in MPD, we always uh, recommend uh, dealing with a lighter mud, but you need to displace to lighter mud. And while displacing to lighter mud, uh, there is a risk involved in this because let's say, uh, in a particular case, if the well had a 14 ppg mud, and your recommended procedure says that I would like to use 12 ppg mud, then uh, then you have to displace the well to that lighter fluid, which is so-called fluid that you would be using for the MPD operation. Usually, it happens at the beginning after you have drilled, you should track and a little bit of formation. You check the well is static, and then you displace to the lighter mud. 
So, but you need to do that as a procedure because you don't want to suddenly uh, displace uh, went to a lighter fluid and invite a key for uh, any well control situation. So, how do you do that? This is a detailed procedure. Uh, so, but in a nutshell, <clears throat> what you need to do, you need to adjust your surface back pressure as per requirement. So, you need to maintain 12 ppg equivalent mud weight in the well while you are displacing your fluids from 12 ppg to 10 ppg by adjusting your surface back pressure. So, you have this additional tool or facility or option to adjust your surface back pressure to make sure that although you are changing your mud from 12 ppg to 10 ppg, by adjusting the surface back pressure, you are actually uh, making sure that the well doesn't see a lighter mud system right away. It sees in stages in gradual uh, mode and you have full control over the situation and, uh, and the well is stable. So this is this is what uh, it is, and I would uh, you know I would share this procedure with you. You guys have a look at it, go through them step by step. You know, I'm sure you will uh, you know you'll have a better of these things. Else. So kick detect. Let's talk about kick detection using MPD. This is also a procedure actually. You need to detect a kick, and there is a way to detect a kick and uh, uh, confirm that it is a kick. So so what are the primary indications of a uh, kick detection? Uh, you will see that there is a gain in the pit volume. You will see there is an increase in the flow out. You will see that there is a, a decrease in the pump pressure. So these are some of the indicators that would uh, give you a, a positive indication of a kick. So monitoring of trends of these parameters is important and should be identified and recorded throughout the drilling sections. Any variation to the established trend should be investigated and resolved at the very earliest occurrence before the situation escalates. Well control procedure. So, <clears throat> what is a what is a well control procedure? And actually, we have another slide deck to discuss that. But here, I will just give you a brief uh, on what is what are the well control procedures as far as MPD is concerned. So, MPD system will detect small flow discrepancy or influxes that cannot be uh, you know seen by the uh, the influx that cannot be seen by the by monetary pit level at surfaces. A simultaneous change in the parameter trend will uh, deem a uh, formation influx is in progress and the warning alarms will be activated. Upon positive indication of an influx or a kick, the MPD system is used to increase the surface back pressure to equalize flow in and flow out trend, thereby arresting the flow uh, volume of the influx into a well bore. If volume of influx is greater than three to four barrels or another predefined value, the well is shut in on the risk BOP and the well control will then be handed over to the Using conventional well control procedures. So these are the points we noted. If you have a, a gain of more than three to four barrels or any other predetermined value uh, that you uh, have already you, you know, decided or, or as per the company policy, the well needs to be shut in immediately using this BOP and uh, conventional well control procedure needs to be followed. This you have to keep in mind. Uh, but if you have a small indication of influx, or a kick, uh, you can uh, increase the surface back pressure and uh, try to equalize the flow in and flow out. Basically, you just have to uh, keep these few things in mind at, at the moment. When you actually do uh, you know, go out for MPD planning, you have a series of meetings, you have a, a detailed discussion with uh, the customer and he will, uh, he will advise you. <clears throat> and you have to also sometimes uh, pitch in and give them you share your experience with them. So um, this is a, a very brief about the well control and then you have formation integrated tests. Now we all know, we all do formation integrated tests uh, conventionally, but in MPD, the, there is option to do a dynamic formation integrated test, dynamic leak of test, and so on. So the test is, the test is performed within the pump section from the active system uh, using single pit system and the returns are directed back to the MPD system at uh, active, uh, back to the active system. And this test is used to determine the maximum surface back pressure, which can be applied on the formation being built that will not cause any losses. So this is the purpose of this test. So you need to set the high limit, uh, high limit uh, value of MPD to 80% uh, you know, of the lowest surface equipment rating, that is mostly uh, your uh, RCD. So high pressure side, 
BOP valid, MPD choke manifold, high pressure lines, etc., under uh, setup limits and alarms in operator panel. Uh, this test can be performed up to maximum 300 psi or PRV setting, setting adjusted to 2000 psi on the choke manifold. For those who don't know what is PRV, it is the pressure relief valve. You have a pressure relief valve, so if the system pressure increases beyond a certain point, uh, it should not, in order to avoid uh, high pressure in the well, there is a pressure relief valve. Uh, or pressure relief choke that releases the pressure. Uh, nowadays, they have a pressure relief choke, so it releases the pressure uh, not completely because then uh, that can cause a well control situation. You're just taking out all the pressure by opening the valve. So there is a choke that releases only a certain amount of pressure, but it does keep the rest of the pressure in place. So the PWD reading will be used uh, to determine bottom pressure uh, during FIT. And uh, it must be noted that volume uh, to be calculated, compressibility are not uh, uh, taken into consideration in, uh, dynamic, during dynamic test. So what happens uh, in uh, dynamic uh, dynamic test? So you, you stop your drilling, you pick up a bottom. Usually this is uh, when you have drilled your shoe track and when you have drilled your uh, fresh formation of uh, 10 to 15 feet, and then uh, right after that, you perform this test to ensure the, the formation, maximum mud weight that you can use for drilling that section. So as you do this, you circulate bottoms up and uh, at the drilling rate, with the rig pumps at the drilling rate, change pressure control board or MPD system to manual, because in this case, what you are going to do is from automatic mode, you are going to use the manual mode in their MPD system to adjust the surface back pressure in performing the test. Uh, use uh, the latest surface back pressure as a set point. A set high value on the MPD system, so when you make sure that you don't exceed that value, uh, discuss this with the drilling supervisor, MPD specialist, et cetera. And uh, increase surface back pressure in increments of 25 to 50 PSI, uh, and confirm that choke is responding. And allow flow in and flow out to Stabilize after each uh, step. Uh, record update it on, uh, you know, if you have a PWD, just make sure that uh, you record that. Remember that you are circulating at the drilling rate. So you are having full circulation in the well while you're doing this test <clears throat> uh, using rig pumps. And after FIT value is reached or losses are confirmed, uh, bring surface back pressure down to initial value in steps. So let's say if you do a test in which you increase the surface back pressure gradually in stages of 25 to 50 PSI to 500 PSI. And you know at that 500 PSI, what is your equivalent mud weight in the well? Uh, let's say it is 14.5 uh, PPG. So you know you have established uh, at this stage with the calculations that you do that you have not exceeded and you have not, you have not encountered any losses in your, uh, in your Coriolis video does not record any losses. So you have established that uh, your free FIT value is 14.5 PPG. And uh, just right after that, uh, bring down the uh, surface back pressure readings in stages to zero or, or whatever whatever predetermined value you had. So this is, uh, this is essentially how you do your FIT. Right? Dynamic port pressure determination. So this was the FIT that is the maximum limit. Port pressure is the minimum limit. Now these two values are required to ascertain your maximum reading. You already have it from your uh, pre-drill data, but now you are uh, while you are drilling, you are trying to ascertain these values. So how do you do a dynamic port pressure test? Dynamic port pressure test: you stop drilling, you pick up a bottom, space out, and maintain a you know pipe rotation. Pipe RPM this is very essential because uh, you don't want your pipe to get stuck. Then while circulating at driller's rate, keep the traveling box stationary to provide high, you know, uh, high accuracy during a uh, leak of test. You know, you don't want your pipe to be moving, so your traveling box should be very stationary. Uh, circulate uh, well to remove all cuttings and gas from the system. This is always necessary before you do any particular activity in the well when you have static periods. And uh, recondition the mud. Then you record your uh, SPP at circulating rate. Keep monitoring your flow in, flow out, you know, and then reduce surface back pressure in the increments of 25 psi. Confirm that MPD choke is moving accordingly and pressure is kept at the required set point. 
then allow flow in and flow to stabilize each uh, step that is 10 to 15 minutes. And record PW again, you record PWD readings and observe if the pressure uh, you know, reduces stably, steadily. So you keep doing it. And uh, again, uh, you have to do it until a predetermined value or you have detected any flow out. If you reach a predetermined value, let's say by reducing your surface back pressure, which was earlier 400 PSI uh, to zero, and then you calculate with zero PSI your equivalent mud weight in the well. Let us say it is 11.5 BPG, and your port pressure <clears throat> that was given to you was 12 BPG. Then uh, even at 11.5 BPG, if you are not getting any flow out or any influx, that means that 12 BPG port pressure probably is now is not 12, but 11 BPG at this point, 11.5 BPG. So you need to record this data by doing this dynamic port pressure test and discuss with the geoscience team saying that, well, we did a test and your data uh, was that the port pressure is 12 BPG, but we confirmed that it is 11.5 BPG now. Uh, what to do? Uh, should we, we take this new value into consideration? Because even with 11.5 PG, we didn't get any flow. We didn't get any influx. We are um, in a permeable formation. We are in uh, you know uh, hydrocarbon bearing formation and so on. So these these are the type of discussions that you can have with uh, your team, your geoscience team, and they will uh, then advise you uh, what to do because you have given them a new data point. immediately act, uh, basically, <clears throat> to make sure that you start, uh, you know, increasing your surface back pressure in stages to not allow any further gain. But getting a gain, in, you know, or a gas influx or a fluid influx in the well needs to be handled very properly and with experience. All of this requires good communication with the driller, with the uh, uh, MPD choke operator, MPD supervisor, you know, other other people on the rake to make sure that uh, the the work is synchronized very well because if you remember somebody needs to bring the pumps down somebody needs to increase the choke pressure somebody needs to record the data somebody needs to make sure that there is enough time between the two increments remember each time you do a change on your surface back pressure reading uh, you need to allow some time for uh, the pressure to stabilize uh, this Let's increase the pressure, but but you need to wait for ten to fifteen minutes to stabilize the readings to make sure that the changes that you have done uh, in the pressure is applied throughout the system, and so on. So good communication is important. Good communication also helps uh, in uh, making sure that uh, they will uh, the people have informed you very well about the lineup which line is connected, which valves are open, which valves are closed. Uh, and uh, they are, uh, the fluids are flowing through the right path and we are not pumping against the closed valve and so on. So it goes like this, this is how you do, uh, just an example of step down, you know, when you do a dynamic port pressure test, this is how you reduce your surface back pressure. On the red line here, red curve here is your surface back pressure and the blue one is your standby pressure. So, in each uh, 15 minutes increment, you will see here that uh, every approximate 15 minutes, they have done a change, not before that. So when, you, when you're doing it, it needs to be gradually in order to make sure that whatever changes you do are uh, reflected properly in the well bore. And you have got the response of that here on surface. Uh, and uh, this lag time has to be considered before when you're doing any process. So slow circulation rates, uh, we all know about slow circulation rates, why we do slow circulation rates, when we do slow circulation rates. For those who have attended uh, well control school, they know this very well. For those who have done drilling engineering classes, they also know this very well. But uh, just to quickly uh, let people who have not who are not fully familiar with it know, low circulation rate is done uh to record the pressure system pressure pressure losses in the system at a slower rate why at a lower rate is because in well control whenever you do a well control operation you usually circulate at a slower circulation rate and you want to record the pressure at it 
is because you need to make sure that you don't exceed your uh, system pressures, uh, annual friction pressure loss at the time with the slow circulation rate is low. You also give enough time for the choke operator to make adjustments to the choke. At lower circulation rate, the fluids will flow at slow rate. So the choke operator uh, who is uh, adjusting the choke, I'm not talking about MPD choke in this case, I'm talking about the rig choke where uh, the rig choke uh, operator also has a similar role, but except that in this case, it is not a sophisticated electronic choke that we saw in MPD. It is probably just a hydraulic or manual choke. So he needs time to make adjustments and a slow circulation rate will give him that time to do that. So this is why we do slow circulation rates. Slow circulation rate is a standard procedure on the rig and it is done at periodic intervals. Uh, but when you have an MPD system, you have a different method of doing it. So what you do is uh, while in MPD mode, there are, uh, you know, and you're applying surface back pressure to the well, uh, while drilling, circulating, uh, the optimum way of performance is, is to continue flowing through the MPD system. SCR should be performed. And, you know, when you have a uh, change in the mud densities, when you have different crew coming in, so you have to do it a shift change uh, prior to, uh, you know, drilling or line, liner shoe, you know, basically. <clears throat> a minimum of 200 to 250 GPM needs to be flowing through the choke to uh, ensure that surface back pressure can be applied. And this is a detailed procedure for uh, doing the take, carrying out or taking slow circulation rates. You know, so let me just quickly go through it. So what you do is uh, you circulate through the MPD system at drilling rate, and then if uh, drilling pickup of bottom and space out, ensure that your drilling uh, drill pipe to joint is neither in RCD bearing assembly nor BOPs. Maintain pipe rotation uh, and start pumping across the MPD system at 250 GPM. If well is stable. Decrease the pump rate uh, gradually down the drill string to the first SCR value. So uh, your SCR value uh, could be, um, let's say 150 uh, GPM. So you need to bring it down to 150 GPM. Uh, as the as the decreased as you, as you decrease, uh, you know, uh, or 50 GPM. Sometimes it is very low as well as uh, you know 50 GPM. So as you as you decrease, uh, you know, the rig pump rate gradually down, adjusting the first SCR, adjust as, as, as surface back pressure to compensate for loss of friction pressure in annulus or LCD. At the desired SCR, uh, you simultaneously record as PP from the rig choke and surface back pressure from the MPD panel operator. This will give you your slow circulation rate per pressure. And your SBP reading will be uh, monitored in the MPD system. So these are uh, some of the steps that you need to take when you're recording this. And you need to do this periodically, every ship change, uh, every time you change the mud system or properties and so on. There are fixed guidelines and the crew does it. But with the MPD system, there are additional steps as outlined here. And you need to follow them. So tripping procedures. So while tripping, uh, what happens in tripping is uh, you need to uh, <clears throat> you need to displace the well to a uh, higher uh, uh, mud weight uh, fluid. So, but you have an RCD, and also you need to remove your RCD bearing assembly. So that uh, so the so tripping out uh, of the BHA uh, are you know this is when you reach a section uh, TD or when you have a problem in the BHA or weight and it is decided to put a hole. Then you need to remove that, as I said, RCD bearing assembly. Therefore, either the entire well or part of the well is displaced to heavy fluid to balance formation pressure, uh, well bore stability, and mitigate scrubbing effects. So, displacing the well to heavy mud weight in and out of the well will be performed in MPD mode while adjusting surface back pressure so that BHP water mold pressure does not vary to either cause an influx, well bore instability, or fracture the formation. These are the three points that you need to keep in mind when you are displacing the heavy fluid. Uh, you are to make sure that you gradually remove your surface back pressure. As the heavy, heavy mud is pumped into the well and it displaces the lighter fluid, you need to gradually adjust the surface back pressure in stages. And you, there is actually a schedule that you need to make. Uh, you have usually either an Excel sheet or a, or a software 
program that gives you an option to give you the values of SBP because your fluid in the well keeps changing. Uh, so does the pressure and so does your SBP need to be changed adjusted to make sure that the displacement is done without causing uh, any high pressure in the well or any low pressure in the well. And now uh, let's uh, discuss about uh, contingency procedures. So we have we, dis we discussed some of the operational procedures. Prior to that, we discussed the startup procedures. And now we are going to discuss contingency procedures. What are contingency procedures? Emergency, they can also be called as emergency procedures. Contingency or emergency procedures are nothing but uh, you have your NRV, uh, flow stop valve failure. You have your RCD element failure. <clears throat> you have your MPD choke plugging. You may, have, you may have a kick in your well, you may have lost circulation, you may have power failure of the equipment, you have hydraulic failure, electrical failure, and so on. So you need to do some uh, contingency. So NRV, these are the same uh, non-return valves in the drill string that we discussed in the beginning, uh, which, are, which are part of the drill string. If those fail, then also there is an emergency situation considered to be activated. So uh, there are many of these procedures. We are going to just check a few of them uh, in order to make sure that we you know, keep in uh, you know, timing of this session. <clears throat> so now let's uh, examine uh, what happens if you have an RCD failure all of a sudden. RCD failure is those rubber elements that I showed you. Those may fail because of wear and tear, because of uh, certain things. And uh, if they fail, uh, you need to do something to replace it. So what do you do? You just close your, shut down your pump, close your annular, open the choke manifold, read your pressure, remove the RCD bearing assembly and reinstall a new RCD bearing assembly. But this needs to be done rather uh, immediately because if you allow um, pressure to be decreased in the well, so this the failure of RCD element can lead to loss of pressure in your well. Then you need to, uh, then you may have okay, invite an influx because lower flow influx and if you're drilling through hydrocarbon formations, you can potentially invite an influx. So MPD choke plugging. The chokes from where uh, you are uh, flowing can get plugged and a plug choke can erratic, cause erratic pressure increase in your well. Imagine that your choke is controlling uh, the bottom of pressure and uh, you do, uh, you do, uh, 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 suddenly see an increase in pressure in automatic mode, you have to examine uh, the possibility of the choke being plugged by some of the solids from your fluid. Now, this can happen. You know, uh, your uh, fluids <clears throat> that are returning from the well have the mud cuttings, have solids, so they need to be monitored. And if by opening the choke, the choke does not uh, unplug, then uh, switch to secondary leg. You know. Uh, NRV distinct failure that we just uh, had a look at. NRV is again very important primary burial during MPD operations. NRV failure will be evident on connections. Uh, no major issue if NRV, uh, uh, you know, during, if, if, you're, if you're drilling fluid is static in the well, overbalanced, uh, statically overbalanced, then there is no issues. Why? Because even if you're static, uh, you are uh, still uh, not, uh, you know, potentially likely to get any influx. But if the um, fluids, uh, if you're if you're underbalanced, then it is, it is possible to uh, you know get an influx, and then this is an emergency, a real emergency. Then because then you might probably get an influx uh, from your uh, drill string uh, up uh, into your drill string. You know. So the first step is to try to see if uh, failure is due to any obstruction or anything that can be removed through circulation. If failure cannot be corrected. Then you have no choice but to pull the, uh, the string needs to be pulled out of hole to replace the NRV. So you need to trip out a hole uh, to pull the NRV, uh, to replace the NRV. So, and then, uh, okay, so now the next uh, contingency or emergency procedure is loss circulation in MPD. So the key difference between conventional and MPD uh, is that MPD, uh, your first response is to reduce surface back pressure by opening the choke and make sure that your, your delta flow in and delta flow out are equal. 
So these are the key differences when you are uh, <clears throat> dealing with the uh, MPD. Uh, in uh, conventional drilling, the option that you have is to reduce the circulating rate. And by uh, reducing the pump rate, uh, you are actually reducing the friction pressure loss in annulus. So with that, you will actually, uh, here you have more options. You can also, you can mainly reduce the surface back pressure, but you also uh, reduce your, uh, you know, pump. you can also reduce your pump rate potentially. See if you can mitigate these losses without any further corrective action needed or pumping of loss circulation material and so on. And then you have these other things like equipment failure, uh, electrical failure, and uh, air failure, pump failure, uh, washout on the choke, uh, bit nozzle plugging, which are similar. So, so you can use the MPD to uh, do dynamic well control, and we will discuss this in the next section. But uh, mainly, uh, let me just um, give you some idea about uh, these three uh, failures because they are important and in this slide deck, I think the period procedures are not there, but uh, let me just give you some idea. So what happens is when you have an electric power failure, the MPD control system, there is a UPS, which operates for about 25 to 30 minutes and that continues to give signal. So if that air supply fails, then there is enough uh, pressure in the system to do uh, uh, one complete <clears throat> choke close and one complete choke open operation. And the chokes are designed in such a way that if you are holding certain pressure, it will continue to hold, meaning the choke will not close or open in any way. It will, it will maintain the same position. Uh, so if the choke is, let's say, 35% uh, uh, open or 35% close, whatever may be the reading, it will continue to maintain that. Uh, such that uh, uh, you will not have any direct effect on your well immediately, but for sure the problem has to be rectified uh, at the same time. Now, other failures are uh, basically washouts and bit nozzle plugging where you will, in washouts, it could be a washout of surface equipment, it could be a washout of drill, uh, drill pipe and bit nozzle plugging. So these are the points that you can also review. Uh, good. Uh, points to think and uh, make some analysis and even perhaps write some papers and all that, you know, so uh, procedures for, uh, you know, handling washout during MPD, etc. Think about all these things in your, um, you know, normal things. The pump failure, uh, this we didn't discuss, but pump failure is uh, similar to uh, doing a connection. Uh, the only difference is that the pump failure might happen almost immediately, and but you have two pumps most are operating. So, so if one of the pump fails, then accordingly you have to increase the surface back pressure to have a minimum uh, impact on your circulating rate, bottom wall pressure, etc. And then uh, try to rectify the pump uh, while you are operating with just one pump. And uh, sometimes the rig, has, the rig has a third pump. Usually they, uh, you know, bring the third pump up to the required flow rate, and then it goes on like that. Till they rectify the pump. So MPD procedure development is a key step. The whole idea of discussing all these things is to give you an idea or a sense of how important this is to develop these procedures. These procedures are available. Uh, you have to work on them for each MPD job. Procedures are available and uh, they are uh, a key the success of every MPD project. It is not just important to develop the procedures, but also discuss them with the crew because a lot of it requires the involvement of the rig crew. And uh, only after you have developed the procedures that you will have a chance to discuss with them, advise them about various steps. And use of MPD technical. Uh, uh, so in the next section, what we're going to discuss is uh, dynamic uh, well control. So, what uh, we are going to say uh, see here is uh, the use of MPD technique allows dynamic control of well, uh, well such as the nor nom nominal uh, you know influxes that uh, it does not require the well to be shut in. So you can save some big time by detecting the kicks early and controlling them using the MPD system. Uh, so further MPD provides further control to the driller to detect, uh, contain, and circulate out influxes without shutting the well 
this positively impacts the safety and drilling efficiency. So if, if you shut in the well using the risk choke, then the process is quite lengthy and it takes a lot of time. But if you are able to do it, let's see. So the, this essentially was the topic uh, related to uh, topic related to the well control. And uh, I'm just going to move to the next topic, which is the last topic of our discussion, uh, which uh, where we discuss dynamic well control, basically. So, and then probably I think we will at the end after we finish all this, I think we can have a general Q and A uh, where we will uh, try to answer all the questions and just feel free to communicate with me anytime. If I uh, have the answer, I will give it to you. If I don't have the answer, I will find out and then give it to you. So in any case, uh, the important, uh, what is more important is to have interaction and continuously evolve and uh, you know, continuously uh, uh, upgrade our knowledge because the industry is evolving, the industry is changing and additional information, additional knowledge. So you can pitch to the relevant employers and uh, they can help you, uh, you know, with uh, knowing your background, knowing your knowledge, they can help you in a much better way in assessing your potential of employability. So let's look at this fourth topic of today's uh, discussion, which is like the dynamic well control. So what, what we essentially have here So, so MPD, well, MPD and well control definition. So conventional well control, what is conventional well control as uh, most of us know, conventional well control is a set of procedures, technique and equipment used to keep the formation fluids under control while drilling. So on the right side is a schematic, which annulus, you have your pressure injection, you have your PWD tool that we have been discussing about, and here you have your annulus. And from annulus, you check your annular pressure, and then your fluids go to shell shaker. This is a very typical kind of setup. Uh, on, your, on your very left here, you have a pump, and that is pumping into the well. So for those who don't know, well control is generally classified into three stages, <clears throat> which is primary well control, secondary well control, and tertiary well control. So what is primary well control? So hydrostatic pressure in the well bore is greater than formation pressure. This is primary well control. What is secondary well control? Secondary well control, uh, basically, in this case, you use surface pressure equipment. Uh, surface equipment is used to control an influx when the formation pressure exceeds the hydrostatic pressure uh, in the initial stage. So if your mud column is unable to, uh, unable to uh, control the pressure in the well, then you use surface equipment to contain that influx. Basically, you use close your BOP and you circulate the kick out. And this is your secondary well control. Uh, so the primary well control, uh, in primary well control, your hydrostatic pressure in the well bore is greater than your formation pressure. So it's just a mud column. But in MPD, you just as you know, we, we have to make sure that uh, the definition changes slightly and we'll come to that. And uh, what is tertiary well control? Tertiary well control is uh, when your primary well control and secondary well control doesn't work. So you have very high pressure in the well, your well is blowing, and somehow you manage to contain it by just closing the surface valves. That's it. But you're not able to do anything. You're lucky if uh, you're able to contain everything and there's no damage. Uh, so later on, you can use snubbing operation, as it is mentioned here, to kill the well. But uh, but by and large, tertiary well control requires drilling of relief well, drilling of uh, you know another well, and containing the fire. Basically, the well is blowing out in an uncontrolled way. So these are the three main uh, definitions of well control. So why what does, what happens? Uh, what are the different phases? Uh, so planning, conventional well control, and managed pressure drilling. So most of the points are similar. Uh, but if you see, uh, warning signs are different here. So planning requires poor and of pressure prediction tolerance and well design. Same thing here. But you have one more element called well control matrix. And now we need to add one more thing over here, which is influx management as well. Your well control matrix. In, so 
why uh, well control uh, you know why why mpd enhances well control is because you have additional tools additional calculations incorporated in that to give you uh, an advantage over conventional systems which are the well control matrix so appropriate uh, you know modulation appropriate you know you have pressure management in conventional uh, conventional uh, drilling the only proper management of mud weight that is drilling fluid but here you have drilling fluid plus surface back pressure warning signs are the same your reaction in a first reaction that you have in conventional is you do your flow check and you shut in manage pressure drilling as i have indicated earlier doing of flow check so there is no um, need to do another flow check because your flow out reading has already indicated that there is a gain so your first step is already a reaction the reaction in conventional and the reaction in mpd is an important step here and how do you control is the same thing you circulate your kick uh, circulate your kick out and you kill the well here you circulate the kick out and don't necessarily kill the well but uh, but you you do circulate the key the out but in a conventional well control it is important that you kill the well how do you confirm uh, that there is a well control situation by uh, a flow check here you constantly keep monitoring your flow in and flow out balance so this is how you usually have different steps in mpd versus conventional drilling with reference to your well control uh, situation here is a typical example of well control matrix on that we will uh, discuss today uh, so if you have a case where you are drilling uh, and you have no influx and your surface pressure is a bit in the range of 0 to 600 psi then you are drilling in a safe condition and there is, there is no action taken further if you are drilling uh, from 650 to 200 psi uh you reduce uh, your rotation speed while in, and increase your mud density or increase your compression pump rate uh, so what you do is you make sure that uh, you why we have reduced your speed is because this is dynamic conditions and uh, when you have uh, the pressure increases the rcd uh, rotational speed decreases and there is a matrix for that there is another matrix for that if you refer to if you are performing connection that is in static condition and if your surface back pressure is in 0 to uh or 1200 psi you are static you are not rotating you are not circulating so this is acceptable to rcd and again you are in the green zone <clears throat> so what happens that if you get an influx but if it is less than the balance and you are in this block here so what you need to do is reduce your rotational speed increase surface back pressure and uh, you know displace uh, to uh, displace fluid to uh, this thing uh, to the new uh, you have to increase your uh, surface back pressure you need to calculate your uh, new equivalent mud weight and basically gradually you have to increase your mud density so you do increase your surface back pressure but at the same time you need to increase your mud weight this process takes time uh, in a drilling operation increase mud density so till the time the mud density is increased by the reclue you have to compensate uh, your requirement of additional surface back pressure needs to be compensated by with the help of a surface back pressure but once you get the additional mud weight in the well then you need to go back into this green zone uh, so so therefore uh, this needs to be done and so on let's take one scenario where you have an influx and uh, it is three barrel uh, and then <clears throat> greater than three barrel so what are you going to do and you are in this range pick up of bottom mpd traps rig pressure shut in bop as per rig procedure perform well control as per rig procedure period so clearly says that you have a gain you have a more, it's more than three barrels and your operating pressure limits are Uh, between 650 to 1200 psi or less than that you have to 
straight away uh, without wasting time shape the rig bop follow the rig bop rig well control procedure so this is how we normally do in any scenario uh, this gives you an idea this is just one example and this example is based on 120 rpm uh, rotating you know, at 120 rpm we had this gentleman who was discussing you know, rpm and uh, the rig capacity so this is just to give you an idea that all these factors are taken into account where you do it for one different different scenarios and you agree upon one condition so what are the warning signs typically uh, when you are uh, drilling and tripping and uh, any other uh, you know, conventional operations so the warning signs are uh, increase in return flow uh, increase in fit level uh while tripping you know whole uh, you know doesn't take whole whole not taking proper calculated volume that means there is already an influx in the hole uh so these are also other warning signs you know in conventional drilling well is flowing with pumps off in stable conditions in mpd you are comparing your flow in and flow out and your flow out is more than your flow in so these are uh, some of the warning signs for kicks that you need to always keep monitoring so <clears throat> in essence whether you are dealing with a well controlled matrix or an influx management envelope what it does i think we are running out of time we already exceeded some time here but i think we are in the last few slides now you know uh, influx uh, is is containing a certain level of fluids and understanding the limits of the mpd system under dynamic conditions this is the key and i would like you guys to think about this further uh, you have limits that uh, you need to set before you start your operations if you have a particular kick below particular limit and what are the envelope what are the uh, what is your operating area how much is your rpm what are the what is the pressure in the well and so on so influx uh, volume limit specif uh, specified are uh, you know subject to discussion and agreement with client at this stage the uh, the following limits are given as example but uh, you know he <clears throat> could be change at the discussion of the client the client can say no i just want to listen to two barrel not three barrel and so on so so normally you know if, if you are drilling normally and you are within this 150 to 500 psi range with static but weight plus surface back pressure and it is more than if it is more than your port pressure it is considered as normal surface back pressure drilling you can go maximum while you are doing surface back pressure and your rotation is below uh 50 So the rotation also affects the pressure rating of your RCD. If you're below 50, then your static mud weight plus surface back pressure would be greater than your pore pressure. So dynamic well control is the process of increasing bottom hole pressure and removing the influx without shutting the well. You know this this can uh, this can be done safely with small kicks. How to use dynamic well control? Uh, so the, since this topic is a you know our dynamic well control, we're just discussing some more points. You know. what do we do we just increase surface back pressure until flow in and flow out are equal uh, once well is balanced circulate kick out uh, keeping drill pipe pressure constant so you you once your flow in and flow out is equal and there are no further influxes you just continue to drill continue to circulate to the well uh, and uh, make sure that uh, your drill pipe pressure remains constant determine if surface pressure is within the limit at, at any given time just make sure your surface pressure doesn't exceed the pressure limit if not calculate new mud weight and displace well to new mud weight so if your sur if your surface pressure is exceeding a particular limit then you need to have you know drill a uh, pump a new mud weight which is of a higher density so in uh, if kick is outside the dynamic limit shut in the well with nrv it is not possible to reach the shut in drill pipe pressure as you know because of the nrv you cannot uh, the pressure in the drill string will be just the hydraulic hydrostatic pressure well pressure will not Uh, directed so you have to monitor spp and casing pressure uh, look for an rv opening indication open the valve and shut the pumps you know, and then go on like that there is a procedure for recording shut in drill pipe pressure uh, when you have an rv in the string uh, i would uh, suggest you guys uh, refer to that this procedure talks about that uh, and it is usually taught in the well control school uh, when you have an rv in the string you can uh, record your shut in casing pressure but not the shut in drill pipe pressure and this is again the same schematic of well control matrix is repeating here uh, it just basically either either it is influx management envelope or well control matrix it just sets the uh, guidelines you know it 
Inverse management envelope is another bigger envelope where your pressures at different stages, different points in the well board is considered. It. And this is a decision tree when you typically uh, encounter uh, uh, influx in a well. <clears throat> And that is uh, your uh, flow in and flow out. You, you flow in, in a pretty scenario, if you see that flow out is greater than flow in, then you have to consider this as an influx. Then influx greater than three barrel, what are you going to do? Uh, uh, yes, then shut the well in as per well control procedure. No, circulate influx out uh, through, uh, through the rig, choke via poor body gasser, and uh, you know holding SPP constant. And then at this time, you have a decision by the client, then uh you have to manage your ecd with surface back pressure and it goes on like that so you have you have to you have such decision trees to be made before you start any operations multiple for various things so this basically uh talks about uh, similar things you know preventing uh, how do you prevent a kick uh, using mud weight using proper procedures monitoring is different how the flow check is done what do you do uh, after you detect an influx? Similar, uh, basically, uh, similar uh, comparison. And uh, it goes on like this. Basically, I just want to show you all clearly how, how the two setups are different. This is your hydrostatic pressure. This is your hydrostatic pressure here, which is much lower, as you can see from conventional drilling. Then your circulating fixture, then your surface back pressure. During drilling, during connection, <clears throat> and then if a change in bottom pressure is required, you just increase your uh, surface back pressure. The rest of the things remain same. Here, you may increase your mud weight, you may increase your circulating friction. So, and during uh, connections, there is always a reduction in bottom pressure, which can lead to. Uh, a situation uh, in a kind of well control situation or influx or you can get some gas in the well or formation fluids in the well and it goes on like this these are this is the definition and we just viewed that and uh, some of the procedures in well control that we use are the same uh, drillers method concurrent method weight and weight method special methods in tertiary like using stubbing unit and all that uh, basically uh, the summarization of all this is that you you have additional tools, you have additional uh, possibilities using MPD for you to control the well uh, in the event that there is an open well control uh, situation. I think with this, we are pretty much uh, towards the end of uh, our presentation. And uh, if you gentlemen have any questions, just feel free to unmute and ask me. You can have a quick q and session. Uh, Abdul, are you there with us or? Yes. Okay, good.